All right. Okay. I think we did it. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, beautiful souls, we are here today. Let me turn that down a little bit. Okay. Welcome to the second part two of the first episode of Universe the Game. Okay, now this one is going to be a lot different from the first one because the first one was very much focused on the the beginning aspect of it, but I'm really excited to bring this fantastic episode to you today because we're going to dive really deep into probably a lot of things that you've not heard of before because this was from his second book, which is Destiny of Souls, okay? So, sorry about the, uh, had to postpone it a little bit there because we had some car issues and, you know, things happen sometimes and that's just the way it goes. But we still have a fantastic show for you tonight. All right. So, we got a lot of slides, but it's a lot of beautiful information and, and yes, I'm excited. Okay. Let's see if I can get there. I had to split them up into two different ones. Okay, it's actually this one. Yes. Okay. All right, this should be the one. Let me uh, get an okay here. Yep. Okay. All right, so we are on part two. Okay, so Dr. Michael Newton again, and we'll be going into Dolores Cannon next week. But this is a recap for anybody who hasn't seen the first episode or doesn't really remember that much. So this is the experience of the soul world, okay? Okay. The spirit world, the soul world, I call it the lobby, universe the game. It's kind of like the lobby of the video game, okay? So you are still a player in the video game, in the lobby, and I consider the lobby like the home. The home of the spirit, your home, my home, okay? So the usual experience as a soul is that you're leaving the body after it becomes uninhabitable. Then the spirit guide greets you or your soul mate or one of your soul mates from your primary group. Somebody that you recognize, really. And then you go through the tunnel into the spirit world. You get to the healing station. And we're going to dive a lot deeper into the healing station this time because we kind of scratched the surface. But I think it's really a really interesting thing that not a lot of people talk about is that your soul can become damaged by the psyche and by the physical body that can damage your soul. Because a lot of people say you're immortal, which I know, of course you are but your soul can still take damage in the game, all right? So then you have a welcoming party, and in both books, it describes some of them are crystalline structures, something from your past life. It could be a lot of Greeks. It actually says there's a lot of people that are alive today that were part of the Greek civilization in Greece, which is very interesting, all right? So then the life reflection with the spirit guide and then with the council, all right? And so then you go to the staging area, which is kind of like this this uh, kind of train thing that takes you into your home or your part of the spirit world. You return to your soul group, you reflect, and you rest, okay? And then a lot of people, you know, it's actually funny because a lot of people, especially on TikTok, I see in the comments where they feel very tired. And one thing that I want to let you know, if you're feeling tired, especially right now with, with your incarnation, because... The world is wild right now, okay? So one thing to really understand is that you can regenerate yourself in life, but also outside of this life, you have your free will to choose, you know, how long you want to rest before your next one, if you if you choose to do a next one. But if you, you know, fulfill your balancing of your karma and you're in service to others, as the law of one says, you that is not an automatic process after that, pretty much. Okay, so now we're into the new content. All right, so incarnation increases as society progresses. This is actually fascinating to me that, you know, in Paleolithic cultures, and I didn't get enough time today with the uh, spelling, so if the spelling of the slides are off a little bit, I didn't get to review them at all because of the car issues, so, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. So, but anyways, in Paleolithic cultures... You know, 2.58 million years ago is when it was when the book says that we started incarnating on this planet and that your lives were thousands of years apart. All right. And then seven to five thousand 
then it was 500 years apart. And we can kind of see a pattern here that between 1,000 to 1,500, you have once or twice a century. A century is every 100 years. And yes, I didn't remember what a century was, so that's why I put every 100 years because I didn't remember off the top of my head. So you're not alone if that's what you thought. But uh, by the 1900s, living more than one life every 100 years is commonplace. So you can kind of see that as society progresses, it actually really lines up with what the Law of One has to say because the Law of One, it talks about how you get more chances in green race situations, which means heart situations, heart chakra situations, where life gives you more opportunities to not just survive, but to have a choice whether to be compassionate or not. Because in you know in the Paleolithic cultures and era, and you know back when civilization was more survivalistic based, you know a lot of those times you're not going to have a lot of those situations where you can learn lessons really. And so souls have freedom to choose when, where, and who they want to be in their physical lives, right? And I remember in the book, it talks about how you can have, you have about five or six choices that are, that are given to you by the explorers and by the time masters, okay? And we'll get into those specializations as we go on. So some, some souls spend less time in the spirit world in order to accelerate development while others are very reluctant to leave. So you could be either one, you know, something to contemplate, especially as we're going through this, really try to dive in and contemplate, you know, what, what really you feel in your heart about this, not logically what you want, because we all want to be advanced, of course, but what does your heart feel when it hears this information? And then you could probably get some really good feedback from your soul as to what resonates with you. So all right, the Ring of Destiny. So, spatial area with advanced spiritual technology, that's my wording, used to view future life scenarios. So it's this kind of this sphere ring where there's a there's basically a bunch of, and Dolores Cannon talks about this, and we'll get into that in next week, that there's a bunch of very advanced spiritual computer, basically, tech that you can have a bunch of screens in which you can go you can actually go into the screen you go into the life before you live the life like your soul will pop in that body and say hey how's do i like this is this going to be a good fit and if it doesn't you might not take that that's wild to me it's amazing so in this area you see a circle of past present and future which is why it's called the ring you leave spiritual now time because in the spirit world, time is considered as now. And then you'll always have this present moment. And this is what a lot of teachers such as Eckhart Tolle focus on, the present moment, right? And what that really means is that kind of like think about it. If you're in a video game, there's going to be video game time, you know, for example, if you're playing GTA or something, you know, there's going to be in game time where the world is revolving, the sun's going up and down you know, or Sims. And then outside of that, there's your, your now time, which is your present moment time. So there's two different times going on there. And that's the best way that I kind of relate to that. All aspects of time are presented to them as reoccurring realities ebbing and flowing together. So time, you can go forward and backward in time, but remember that in the spirit world now time, it's very important to realize that the future as a soul is a potential. It's not set, but the past and the present are set. So if you go into the future, let's say you go into the body to check it out. That's not the same as going into a life like this life, because there's going to be different times. That's that's just a kind of like a simulation. That's why we're, we're in the universe, the game energy, because when you see this, when you really, I can see this like with my, you know, third eye where it really feels as though I can tune in and see, oh, well, we're just going in, we're going into bodies like, like they're a controller. Like I'm picking up, you know, this mouse and keyboard, you know, and I'm just, the body is an advanced mouse and keyboard or Xbox controller. And one thing that I feel is 
misinterpreted is that people think that you can't see life as a video game or as a game and still have sympathy for suffering. I think those two things can very much be in the same arena. Just because it's we're calling it a game doesn't mean that it's not that suffering isn't real because it's still real in the game. You still can feel things. You still have emotions come up. Those are very real, but it's just an advanced game. And I think that comes up because in video games, you can't actually feel, you know, your character, you know, going through stuff. All right. So question is alkaline water good for us to drink? Of course. Absolutely. I mean, that's what you want to aim for. You want to stay away from bottled water. You want to get into, I know this is off topic, but you, you don't want bottled water and you want to get glass. You want to have some substance that doesn't seep in if you can. So I would get glass containers and keep your glass, keep your water in glass containers. Then either use a pitcher to get out fluoride, but you want to make sure there's no fluoride in there too. All right. So, and other contaminants, but all future potentials in ring exists as a potentiality because all parallel realities are superimposed upon one another. So that's what I'm trying to get at to put that in layman's terms. Just imagine, and eventually, you know, with the setup, we're going to have, I'm going to have, I'm going to be able to get up here probably in the next month. I'm going to have a different setup and I'll be able to get up and point to things on, you know, think I'm going to have different visual aids behind me. So I don't have to use my hands as much, but how I would, I would, how I would say this is like, imagine that you have, you know, this, imagine this, these right here are your lives they kind of all come from this same place just like your fingers come from this place okay so all of these are potentials you're just kind of exploring it but you aren't actually going down it right you're just looking you're observing what would happen if you did this what would happen if you went into this body or this body had these parents but you're not going there yet but you only go there once you actually choose to get into that body then you have a specific time let's say right here then the potential would become actualized eventually when you're going through your life path, but you can do different things and still have this highest timeline too. Like you don't have to be perfect is what I'm getting at with that. So amnesia is imposed upon us when we come into a current life so that past life experiences will not inhibit self-discovery in the present. So if we had all the memories of our past lives, a lot of times it would really affect how we made decisions. And the whole point of this is to have the free will without any baggage, you know, to see what happens. But it's very interesting because mostly we see that sometimes past life stuff comes with us into this life and it goes into that in the book too. So it's a, it's a weird system. It's a weird system. Do we choose for lessons? We definitely choose less. That's, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. I'm sure that that'll come up here in the next slide. The purpose of reincarnation is the exercise of free will. Without this ability, we would not, we would be impotent creatures indeed. We wouldn't have free will to choose. So just imagine as you go into the ring of destiny, you, you're choosing your lessons for that life because different bodies are going to have different th lessons from them. For example, you might have two options, you know, an abusive dad, or and a um you know a high energy mom or it could be the opposite you know and those are going to be those might lead to different things like you might your lesson for one life might be guilt overcoming guilt or it might be overcoming anger if you've had angry past life or if you've had you know different emotions come up pride and so that's something to contemplate for sure what emotion comes up a lot for you does that remind you of a video game? And it literally does to me. And so a lot of times it's to enjoy it, to have fun and also get better at the game. And what I'm getting at here is think about when you're playing a video game, what's the point of playing a video game? Why do so many people play video games? It's because they can have fun. They can have fun with their friends, which, Hey, your friends can be your soul group. Right. And so just like, in this reality for playing a video game, you're doing it to socialize, you're having fun. It's an interesting game. And a lot of times people do it in, in this reality because there's not much else to do. And that's what I'm saying here. What else do you have to do? Because in the spirit world, there's, there's an infinite amount of time. 
So if you weren't incarnating and you didn't have the knowledge to guide others, you would just be chilling. So what are you going to do? You know, <laughs> so you might as well learn some lessons. And of course, just like video games we see right now, there are hard games. There are really hard games, but there are easy games too. And this one just happens to be one of the hardest, if not the hardest. Stellaris Cannon tells us this is the hardest planet, the most difficult planet in the universe. It is important we understand that our happiness or pain does not reflect either blessing or betrayal on the part of a god over soul. Our guides are life selection coordinators. Our guides or life selection coordinators. We are the masters of our own destiny. So there's no one to blame. And we see if you actually get into the book, a lot of the times souls feel as though the blame is on the guide or the blame is on the council for putting them in that heart of a life. But it's interesting because if they would have, you know, overcame those lessons, like whatever lessons you're dealing with, think about that. If you would have overcame that, then you're probably not going to blame anybody. But it's only we only blame when we feel like we didn't do enough. So the beautiful part about realizing this is that you have the opportunity to address what's happening in your life differently right now. Choice of location and life selections can be narrowed down to four or five locations. Once in a while, I hear about a soul returning to the body of a relative in a former life under unusual karmic circumstances. Most of the time, you're not returning to the same family because you're, you're not going to have the, as Dr. Hawkins would say, you're not going to have the maximum potential for karmic growth because you already have, it's the same thing as last life. It's a lot of the same thing. So you have more opportunity in an unrelated body, in a new culture, in a new society, or rather even a new family. It doesn't even have to be a new society. You could have been in whatever country you're in multiple times. Okay, well, I get that, but why are we going through the Ascension? Is that like a game update? <laughs> okay, so I feel like... All right, let's link this. Let's link a little bit of Law of One and, and Destiny of Souls together here. All right. Not to get on too much of a tangent, tangent with it, but everything works in the... in. Okay. Imagine how... You know, I was talking about video game time and... And uh, now time, well, imagine the video game time is on a clock, right? Well, imagine that not just your days are on a clock in this game, but the whole entire universe and each galaxy is on a clock. So what that means is that in order for the game to continue evolving, like we've been third density for a long time, right? So you can just imagine the the Earth just, okay, so if we're third to fourth density, let's say, you know, we have we would be like three o'clock down here for me. I don't know if that's accurate if the camera's flipped, but imagine we're three o'clock. We've been in three o'clock for a long time. Now we're heading to four o'clock and that's what Ascension is. It's that four o'clock is fourth density and it's the way the galaxy evolved because there's a lot of beings on this planet that are ready to evolve and there's not, there's some that aren't, but it isn't fair to have the ones that have ready and have done the inner work not be able to because of, other beings. So you kind of knew that coming into incarnation that this planet was evolving. And I'm sure you were debriefed on that. And that was a conversation that you had that this is like a once in a lifetime experience or once in many lifetimes, a lot, a lot of lifetimes experiences is that the planet moving fully into fourth density is that ascension. And so it happens because the game, the game must move. The show must go on. You know, the game must continue. And Earth is just, it's, it's, not the, it's not a choice, but rather it's an inevitability based on the clock of the galaxy. So then the sun, he, the sun is going to heat up because we're in that four o'clock energy, imagine. But imagine, and I know this is taking a lot of imagination, <laughs> but instead of seeing it as a clock that has strict boundaries uh, in between each other, see it as overlapping concentric circles. I don't remember the name of it. There's a really good diagram. And I'm going to have a lot more diagrams that are related for the next one, just so I can pull them up so you can see them on the, on the screen. So I don't have to do this hand stuff. But instead of it being like, 
okay, now we're in fourth density right away. And it's th three overlaps with four. Imagine there's two circles, but there's like an in-between. There's like a red part where you're halfway in, you're like still in third density and you're still in fourth. And that's where we are. We're not fully in a fourth yet because the planet it has not fully moved into that energy, but it's inevitable because it's on a clock. If that makes sense. So there's cycles for everything. 25,000 years, 2,160 years, I think is each minor cycle. Then you have the major cycle of 25,000 years. Okay. And so that plays in a journey of souls because we kind of know what bodies are going to have, you know, the potential for this time period. Okay. And so also I did an Instagram live about this on the law of one where your body needs to have that upgrade slowly because if it had it all at once, it would disintegrate. So hopefully that answers your question. Okay, so for example, if a brother and sister had a close affinity for each other, because a lot of the times we see that primary soul groups choose brother and sister or very, very close relatives, not parents necessarily, but brother and sister. And one were to die suddenly while still young, the soul of the dead sibling might want to return in surviving siblings child to restore this broken life connection to finish an important task for example let's just I, I don't mean to go dark with it but i just want to be completely honest this is a lot of times what we see is that let's say there's a brother and a sister and the brother commits suicide and and then he's like oh man i shouldn't have done that he gets back to the spirit world as we all do and he's like oh that was that was not a good decision i want to make up for it so he'll go into the he'll be the child of the surviving sister to kind of continue that karmic uh, soul contract kind of karmic lesson, whatever he was supposed to learn before he chose that, he'll go, he'll come back and choose that. And that's just kind of one, one scenario that we see play out. So what's more common in my experience are the souls of young children who die soon after birth and then return to the same parents as a soul of their next baby, as an, as a soul of their next baby words. Woo! Lord. <laughs> If a soul, if souls choose a life where their death will be premature, they often see it in a place of life selection. And I made the, I made a TikTok about this today. Souls essentially volunteer in advance for bodies who will have sudden fatal illnesses or come to an abrupt end of life with many others from a catastrophic event. This is, this is just so this brings so much peace to me because it makes you realize that everything, there's order to everything. Randomness, randomness is not, I mean, there is, of course, free will to choose. But if we think, oh, why did all those people die in that earthquake? It's like, oh, there was a plan to it. And that brings me, you know, a lot of peace. Souls who become involved in these tragedies are not caught in the wrong place at the wrong time with a capricious God looking the other way. Every soul has a motive for the events in which it chooses to participate. Aside from all other considerations, incarnation comes down to souls making that all important decision of a specific body and what can be learned by utilizing the brain of a certain human being. Remember, the brain is separate from the soul. The brain ego is what happens. And this is something that I talk about so much in my one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one sessions. It's very important to realize that you're, you are not the opinions or your thoughts that come up because you're you came to learn how to cope with certain brains and brains brains have personalities okay that's something to realize is that the brain itself has developed its own personality and that you as a soul are kind of melded with that and that personality that the, that the brain has has been basically what it has interpreted throughout its life and how it how it kind of sees things but that opinion is not always true. And that's one of the biggest things you could do for, for yourself in this life is notice the difference between the two. Because if you take your thoughts as truth, it's going to be a very hard life. I'll tell you that right now. But you have to see your thoughts as just kind of these cars that are going by. And you can just watch those cars. You don't have to get in the car. You just watch those cars. And if you can truly do this, then that is definitely getting on the path to self-mastery. Are the veils thinning? Yes. Um, I, I mean, if you've got black smoke creeping around your home, um, you might want to get that checked out. 
they aren't th they aren't thinning that much <laughs> to where it's physical it's not physical at this point so what about babies who die prematurely if you wish to know more about that and specifically destiny of souls has specific case studies where they talk about there's babies that know that they're going to die prematurely and babies that even die in the womb actually go there to to give comforting energy to that mother to know that it's all right and to know that it's okay and so those are absolutely planned and that's something that is actually discussed a lot in destiny of souls this is a good time to ask do you have kids because i've been on the fence about it no i don't <laughs> not for a while for me i've got i've got plenty on my plate as it is you know with how much i'm creating you know with all the uh all the tiktoks the youtube lives and you know, I'm committed to serving you right now, and, you know, we'll see what happens in many years, but but not at the moment. So, The Untethered Soul is a great book about that inner voice. Yes. Yes, it is. All right. So, if you want to learn more about why you choose a body, it goes way more in detail than I did. Way, way, way more. But I was like, okay, I already have, you know, a lot, a lot of slides, so... I felt like if that's something you wanted to get into specifically, Destiny of Souls is the book for you. All right, so now we're getting into the advanced, the advanced, advanced portion. Man, just got four, four slides repeating each other. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, so emergency treatments at the gateway. All right, so emergency healing is both a physical and mental healing exercise that takes place before a soul moves any further into the spirit world so it's like you know how you've probably seen now a lot of course it's cgi but if you're seeing like space movies and they get in the spacecraft and they have that and they gotta get cleared it's the same thing when you get into the spirit world you get up there you go through the tunnel you get you go right to those healing stations if you've had a tough one i mean if you're a more advanced soul you're not going to need near as much healing but you might still need some and so you get showered basically in golden source energy so that it heals you and your guide will your guide is specialized in shaping a lot of the time in shaping you or whatever's happened and there was actually a case in here where it talks about how somebody in world war world war i think it was i think it was two it's really irrelevant who had his leg something happened to his leg and when he got into the spirit world his leg you he didn't have his leg still and the spirit guide actually used his energy and source to kind of manipulate that energy back into a into that energy body which is the causal body or the fourth body all right excerpt from soul leaving the body after an auto accident so here's here's an example when i reached the gateway my guide saw the gaps in my energy aura and proceeded at once to push the damaged energy back into place which is what i was saying he molded it as clay to fill, reshape, and smooth out the rough edges and broken intervals to make me feel whole again. The etheric or soul body is an outline of our old physical body, which souls take into the spirit world. Okay, so this is a chart that I developed based on the work of Richard Rudd. I'm not sure where Richard Rudd got it from. I think he got it from somewhere, but maybe he didn't. But this is called the Corpus Christi or the seven sacred bodies, okay? And so we are on the fourth causal body plane. And the levels, by the way, on the right side are pertaining to logarithmic energy. If you are familiar with the system of levels of consciousness by Dr. David Hawkins, then that will make sense because you'll understand that, you know, zero to 20, 20 is where shame starts. Okay, and so... We don't have, okay, we can get into, I don't want to get into the, the souls without a body arena because that's, that's, that's super sketchy. Uh, but I'll do that at some point, but not today. So then the astral, the astral body is in the realm of shame to pride, which is like, you're not in truth. And that's why we see astral, a lot of times the astral wars are very, very sketchy because if you, if you astral project, but you project into the lower realm, that's not it, Chief. It's gonna be. It's not gonna be that great of an experience. Okay. So then, when you get into the mental body, 
that's when we can start to access you know the higher astral plane from astral projection and so that's from courage to logic and reason and then the causal body is the essence or the fifth dimension instead of you know the, the mental is the fourth dimension the fourth dimension or yeah fourth dimension and then the causal is is fifth because love starts at 500 okay and so we see that eventually we get to the buddhic body the atmic and the monadic body and we get there eventually but that's not something we really even need to worry about right now because destiny of souls is about the first four okay recovery areas all but the most advanced souls crossing back into the spirit world are met by benevolent spirits who make contact with their positive energy as they escort needy souls to quiet recovery areas. And there's actually a soul specialization, which I'm, I don't actually cover in the slides, which is called Keepers of Neutrality. And Keepers of Neutrality just... And oh, there's another one too, but Keepers of Neutrality literally just take you to an area and you they just let you be alone. And they keep that neutral space. They just hold that space for you, but you get to be alone. Right. So recovery areas are different for each soul. Some are gardens, some are crystalline enclosures, some are crystal caves. Very beautiful. Almost a lot of times the souls say they can't describe how beautiful it is because it's so beautiful. So that's actually something great to realize is that you don't have, you don't have you know, that much more to go. You know, a hundred years... I mean, if you get to fourth density, that's a whole different story. But fourth density is 100 times more harmonious than this density, than third density. So it's going to feel like the spirit world, in a sense. Crystals represent enhancement through a balancing of energy. As a shamanic tool, the crystal is supposed to assist in tuning our vibrational pattern into universal energy force while releasing negative energy. And this is what crystals do. And... Crystals, according to the law of one, can only be balanced and, and activated by a balanced mind-body-spirit complex. So, if you're not feeling it, if you feel like your crystals aren't working, something to contemplate. Maybe, maybe, maybe your crystals aren't balanced. Okay, and then if you want them balanced, you're going to need to take it to somebody who you know is at a high level of consciousness. And then they'll, they'll put their energy into it. I feel like a lot of Reiki people could do this and, and balance. Because a lot of healer specializations are very, very balanced in their heart. And that's really what it takes. You know, the heart is the connection of the, the, the higher three chakras and then the lower three chakras. That's why three, 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 then one. And that should make a lot of sense. Akashic records are stored in symbolic libraries and are seen adjacent to other spiritual places. So Akashic records are not, they're not just off somewhere and then way way unaccessible they're just in the spirit world and it's it's been done by edgar casey you know and he when he was alive he's not alive anymore but when he did and actually the law of one confirms this he said that he did and the law of one confirms it that he accessed the akashic records or the present moment and that's just yeah a whole nother level he was on a whole nother level but he there was some Interesting stuff that happened towards the end of his channelings where he had a different kind of being come in and it seemed kind of sketchy. So interesting side note. People in hypnosis report that surrounding Earth, alternate or coexistent realities are part of our physical world. And literally, oh man. Think about it as there's different densities, but there's different sub densities. So Earth has all these different densities, but they also have like an an astral discarnate, I would call it a discarnate uh, density in which you can, you literally, people take trips, people, but souls take trips and, and they watch Earth th as a discarnated soul and they can literally view you like they could, souls could be in the room with you right now. And we see that that can actually happen with a lot of times with, souls that have moved on is that they will visit you and send you loving energy and there's actually a lot of modalities that the souls use that it goes into in destiny of souls but just kind of know that it is like a video game where you can go and you, you can participate in viewing the world without actually being seen 
And we'll get into that. There's actually a really interesting case study that we'll get into in a little bit. Can you astral project without activating the heart chakra? Yes, you can. But that's what I'm saying is that if you do that, then you're going to not, you're not going to be in the mental body or the causal body. And you'll be in the astral body. And a lot of the times the astral body has a lot of, it's not bad, but it's not, there's a lot of sketchy stuff going on in that realm. So I would not recommend it at all. And I mean, it's not, it's not that difficult, at least from what I see to, to just have a, to have a loving intention to have a, you know, an open heart because the open heart, this, think about it this way. If you don't have an open heart, what did I just talk about in one of my TikToks where how to repel negative entities? It's through the heart, through love. But if you don't have that, they're going to come, right? They're going to come. So if you're just astral and you aren't activated in your causal body, which is the, the green ray, essentially, essentially this whole experience is getting your causal body or your loving energy to come through, right? And that's the point. But a lot of the times, even in the soul world, our, our causal body love is not there because of what's happened to us in past lives. If that makes sense. Apparently within these realities, non-material beings can be seen by some people in our physical reality. So there are people that can see this discarnated realm, but a lot of times we call them crazy. So this is really interesting. A woman claimed to see elves in her garden and that they get, and this is from the book, and that they gave her advice to increase the quantity and quality of grape production over that of neighboring farms. She was invited to have her brain waves tested. When her senses were stimulated, it was found that portions of her brain were capable of a much higher energy output than normal. So like, I don't have the, the chart that I had in the last one on me, but she was in a lower brainwave state than most people are consciously. Most people are in beta. She was down one. Okay. So that's, that's like kind of the scientific explanation as to why she could access that. And it makes a lot, a lot of sense. And I had a client who also claimed to have such abilities. She was an old soul and in a deep trance state, she said, fairy folk were here long before the rise of our civilizations and have never left. Most of us do not see them today as in ancient times because they are so old, their, their density has become very light while, other, while our earth bodies still have heavy energy. Okay, so this is, this is actually pretty fascinating. Think about it how the, they basically raised their vibration so high. And as the law, the law of one tells us that fourth to seventh density, and actually, yeah, fourth to seventh, are on purpose, on purpose, not visible. I questioned her further and she said, well, a rock has a 1D density, a tree would be 2D, and our bodies are at that 3D level. Thus, the being of, of nature would be invisible with a transparency registering between 4D and 6D. She said six, but you know, seven, seven density isn't even going to come around anymore. I mean, they're in their, they're in their full unity. That's the gateway density. So you don't really worry about that anyways. And this is exactly, this is exactly what the law of one says. And so this is a diagram that, um, that represents the law of one's kind of way of interpreting reality, which is, you know, first density being the minerals, you know, basically think about it like this is super easy to remember. If you just think about it, like first density is literally just non-moving entities and, and moving as in like, they're not, they don't have legs, they don't have arms and they don't, they aren't walking or doing things or even swimming. But if you can just see like, not just kind of put it into a non-motion and then that's first density. And then second density is motion and motion. Motion can even be growth such as trees. We would put that in second because it is growing. It is moving, but it's moving at a obviously really slow pace, but you're having, you know, wolves, horses, cats, which apparently I forget all the time. Dogs are all in there. 
And then thir third density is there. And the fourth is going to be those that have already moved on. And this is actually an excerpt from the law of one because I, I thought it was just so crazy how it all, it all comes together. So the law of one is in a Q and a format. And so this is the question that was asked. Is there any physical difference between first and second density? For instance, if I could see a second density planet in a first density planet side by side in my present condition, could I see both of them? Would they both be visible? And the answer is this is correct. All of the octave of your densities would be clearly visible were it not the fourth through the seventh freely choosing not to be visible. And so, as you can see, what I said before is not just my opinion. This is from the law of one. And hence the elves made themselves visible to talk to the lady. So they, they decided to become visible. If you want more on this, go, go research Dr. Joe Dispenza and his healing circles, because he's talked about how there have been and light beings that have, when they had, they do these circles. Okay. And they might have like r five really powerful healers, six. I don't know. There's not, I don't know what the number is. They might all be all around each other. Okay. And then when, when they're all around each other, the energy in the room actually changes in it. The energy is all kind of makes it kind of opens like a gateway so that a being you're like coming. Okay. How do I put this? You're coming halfway up to meet this fourth density being that might come down. So it's much easier for them to come through if the energy is high enough. And if there's a healing circle, then these entities are obviously going to come through because there's a reason because that, that person who needs to be healed in these circles, the Dr. Joe circles, you know, they, they, they're not just coming through to say, Hey guys, you know, <laughs> they're coming through because they want to heal this person. So the, the healers in that circle, which is a specialization we're, we're going to talk about, they raise the energy up enough so that the fourth density being can come through. And he's talked about this, you know, that and other people have seen, they've literally seen with their own eyes because they can see them once our eyes are able to perceive it because they've came down and you've met them there. Brilliant, brilliant work there. So it's so fascinating. So if you're interested in, th in that more, go check that out. So it is also my belief that much of our folklore comes from the memories souls have of their experiences on other physical and mental worlds. So a lot of the times I love water and there's a lot of water planets that we find out there. And so a lot of the time after we finish our earth incarnation, it's, it's very common for beings to just want to go to a water planet because water is very relaxing, right? And fire, fire is kind of the opposite. So fire, water, fire is more, you know, you're, you're getting it done, but you, fire is more alchemy. Water is fluid flowing. And so a lot of the times we'll have water memories. I mean, I've had dreams about being on a water planet before. And so if this resonates with you, that might be, or it might be, you know, you might have a dream where you're in a different civilization. That might have been on Earth. That might have not been on Earth because we see a lot of the times beings come from different dimensions, right? Because dimensions are whew, people get density and dimensions mixed up a lot. And I want to touch on it really quick because we're going to talk about explorers and it's very important for you to understand the difference. I got a mustache itch here, apparently. But the, the difference between density and dimension. Density, okay. Let's say, man, I need visual aids bad. Let's say that a uh, the density can be uh, an all-encompassing of the third, the third density experience. I know that's really bad wording, but let's think about it like the Earth would be third density, but there can be different dimensions within that Earth. Okay, so really stick with me here. So, for example, let's just say that you could have this house would be a dimension, and then you go to the next house, but it might be very different might be very, very different. So that's one part of dimension, okay? That like, there are different spaces that coexist, different environments that coexist within one density. The density is the vibration. Like how fast is it vibrating? That's why it's density, dense, right? We think like a rock is dense. So third density might be like 
maybe going like this. Okay. And then dimension is going to be more, uh, what is the space contained? Like what is actually in the space? Also, what is the emotional spectrum of that? So people say we're sending into the fifth dimension. What do they mean? They mean we're sending into the frequency of love because dimension can also mean emotional frequencies. So it's emotional frequencies and environments and density is the entire, is like the entire planet. So again, dimension is like the houses or, or like areas within the density. The density is the whole thing. Okay. Now I know that that might seem complex, but I really feel like that's really important to understand, especially in the spiritual journey. So you can discern when somebody's saying density versus dimension, you know, to, to really see what they're talking about. So I have a lot of animals in spirit coming visible and hang around my home. Why? Is that what you're saying? So if you're having a lot of animals, then you might be the type, there's two type of healers and we'll get into this. And the second type of healers work in the environment and instead of on people or souls. So there's soul healers and there's environment healers. And a lot of times environment healers have a lot of animals, have a lot of animals come through. And honestly, if you're in a loving vibration, you're going to have a lot of animals come in because they can pick up on that energy. So that's something to think about. Your whole talk is so easy to, to digest and understand. Thank you, my friend. That's what I'm trying to do. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. All right. The Christian churches simply do not accept the concept that everything is forgivable in the afterlife. In my experience, all souls are repentant because they hold themselves accountable for their choices. So all those, those people that you see going around saying, repent, repent, right? They're just coming at it from a fear-based place. You'll find that if you go and you, you participate in this or you see this online, the people that talk like this and they're very rude about it, they kind of get an egotistical juice out of having that power over people. I've repented and you haven't. So it's it's very important to discern, you know, that once you get to the spirit world, you're going to realize what it is. Everybody does. Every, everybody does. If you don't believe in this or, you know, I wouldn't say belief, but if, if if you completely deny this, let's say you doesn't you deny that there's a spirit world, you even deny that spiritual there's anything spiritual. Then when you get back to the spirit world, you're gonna see that there that it existed the whole time. You know. Hopefully that makes sense. From all I've learned, soul energy cannot be destroyed or made non-functional, but it can be reshaped and purified of earthly contamination. And that's what we're talking about with the healing stations. We get in there. There are entities who travel to Earth as tourists and have never incarnated on our planet. And that's kind of what I was talking about. Beings that just come in and kind of watch, kind of kind of see how it is. And they can actually be in the environment. They could be walking on down the street, but it's it's kind of like when you're walking in your dream, how there's it could be just you. But let's just say it's a collective dream in the spirit world or that it's a vibration. There's a vibration. Okay. In, in simpler terms, there's a vibration where humanity and third density is not, and that's where they, they're currently at, but they can still see us. So some can be quite advanced while others are maladapts. And anytime you see in this presentation, you see quotations. That's a direct quote from the book. That's not me. But if there's no quotations, that means I probably added something to it. Quite a number of my subjects have told me that between their lives on Earth, they travel as discarnates to other worlds, both in and out of our dimension. Again, dimension can be within the third density or it can be, well, in the spirit world, you can view all densities. From my understanding, well, from my understanding, you, you can probably have a certain limit in which you understand. So you probably can't understand like fifth density. So you're probably not even able to view that because you're still in the third, right? And it's kind of like a school. You, you aren't looking at sixth grade stuff while you're in fourth grade. So difference between dimension and density. So I didn't even remember making this, but density is, is the level in which soul is incarnating and experiencing. So the environment, again, dimension can refer to emotional state or a different world within a density. Yes, yes. Nick, it is easier is easier to learn with. That's why I watch you. <laughs> nice. 
this is a better way to put it. Is it our choice to have kids? Yes, it's your choice. Of course, it's always your choice. I mean, it, so let's say, for example, that you in the spirit world, Ring of Destiny, you're like, well, I want to learn how to be, um, let, let, let's pick an emotion. Let's, let's say I want to learn willingness. Okay, willingness to, to serve others and still take care of myself. You can, there's a potential, see, this is, this is beautiful. There's a potential where you chose, okay, well, I'm going to learn, I'm going to learn through kids, but if I don't choose the kids timeline, then these other events are going to lead me to the same understanding. So it's not like if you don't, if you don't have kids, you won't learn those lessons. No, those lessons are fluid. You see how, you see how advanced this game is to where your lesson can come through in a different way. So this is why what I said at the beginning, if you have a, a high timeline of, let's say the highest timeline is just learning willingness. Let's say that's the goal of your life. Let's say you get down here and you some unexpected things happen and you get into depression, you're very sad, you don't want to be on this planet anymore. You can still get up to willingness, okay? It's not like you had to be up here on this timeline where you were happy the whole time. No, 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 no. <laughs> you, can, you can come right back. So this is why there's always this beautiful opportunity for soul growth and it's not over until you leave the body. So there's not a specific way that you have to learn things. I see his soul as intelligent energy. This energy appears to function as vibrational waves similar to electromagnetic force, but without the limitations of charged particles of matter. Soul energy does not appear to be uniform. Like a fingerprint, each soul has a unique identity in its formation, composition, and vibrational distribution. So what this is saying is that each soul, you can imagine, has its own fingerprint, its own energetic uniqueness and we all have that through the different experiences we've used not used but we've had through our different incarnations that's how we get that uniqueness that's how we are differentiated from the beginning in oh my word towards the end not towards the, i think it's middle we're going to talk about how you come into the universe it's one of the most fantastic discoveries in my opinion i've always wondered in this description that i that i found is beautiful i'm able to discern soul properties of development by color tones yet none of these defines what a soul is as an entity so you are defined by what level you are or what what color your soul is because you're still you know on the journey of the soul so to speak so you aren't defined by that because you're not finished. The ancient Egyptian said that to begin to understand the soul, one must listen to the heart. I think they were right. It's all about the heart. It's, all about, it's always, always about the heart. From a, so this is from a soul under hypnosis. The secret to healing is removing my conscious self as to avoid inhibiting the free flow of energy between us. Okay, background. I should have put a background slide in here. This is how Reiki or energy healing works. You know, you're going to you're going to put your hands on that person in order to heal them or close, right? And so what what she's saying is that she removed her conscious mind, so that's all the chatter. Right? That's all the things that we think we are. And we get to that next level of brainwave states and then it's intelligent energy flowing right through her, intelligent infinity flowing right through her hands or god god source. You know, however you want to word it. My objective is to merge with the energy flow of the patient to bring out the highest good in that body. This is done with love as well as technique. So there's techniques, different energy modalities that you learn as a healer, and this is a healer of the body. And so it's done with the frequency of the causa body or the of love, and also a combination of you know what they what they've learned. If they're receiving, so this is important, so important because you'll see people like, oh man. Man, this doesn't work. I feel like I feel like Reiki is just BS. I don't believe in the spiritual stuff. Like you probably know somebody that gives you that mess, right? And literally, this is the explanation as to if they were to get a session, why it doesn't work. 
if the receiving part inhibits the free-flowing passageways of chi or life force through their own mental negativism, they are perfect, perfectly capable of blocking the detection of the energy field by healer. So if they're all gunked up with their own doubt and pity or anger or whatever it is that they're, they're feeling, the healer actually can't even feel into their energy fields and they can't do the healing. So you can block healing. It's like the placebo, right? You know, in a way, it's more like if you don't believe in it, then it's not going to happen to you. That's why you see people that are so logical and they're like, boom, nothing exists but what I can, what I can see. And they never have a spiritual experience or they don't very often, right? And then when they do, they're like, oh, that was just my mind making up stuff, right? Because they, they aren't willing to take that leap because the leap from logic or science in a, in a sense, because science is, the goal of science is to understand God, so to speak, or understand divinity or understand love or whatever it is that they're trying to comprehend. And the goal of love is to actually embody it, right? You just, you're trying to be it. That's the difference. And if we see that if beings are, you know, so stuck in logic that they're, they're not willing to take that leap, then that's the end, right? That's the end for them. They can only know about spiritual experiences. I mean, they might be guided to have one, of course, but for them to embody love, it's going to take another level kind of like think about how love isn't provable how can you prove love right just like if i had a experience of astral projection and i said to somebody that didn't know anything they'd be like what are you talking about that's a bunch of hoopla and it's like does that make my experience untrue no because each being gets to decide how they interpret reality right and so once you start to believe in healing, you'll see that healing happens and healing works. And there's so many examples. It's like the people that don't believe it aren't even willing to research it and under try to understand it. It's like, nah. And that's when you, when you know they're probably in the level of pride because pride doesn't even want to do the research. It just wants to be right. Okay. Before my research into the spirit world, I had no idea of the special gifts of environmental healers on our planet. So now we're talking about environmental healers, which are not necessarily body. Okay. Those are two different specializations of healers. I have learned that the earth itself has its own vibrational rate, and that there are people capable of tuning into this ecological energy or human resonance. Really a number of researchers have reported on the fact that there are places in the world which give off intense pulses of magnetic energy and in the u.s the one that's talked about is sedona arizona and there's machu picchu peru ayers rock australia these are some examples but you know the funny part about it is a little bit of backstory i lived in sedona for three four months probably about three four months yeah out of a out of my rooftop tent that we have so I've been there. I've felt that. And I'm telling you this because it's, I've felt it. And if you've been to Sedona, you probably understand that. And, and man, if Sedona wasn't so expensive, I definitely think about living there. But I feel like for me, I would definitely much rather be able to continue to travel rather than have a house because I, I really enjoy having the ability to move. So I'll end up in a camper, a motorhome next for sure. Is that why QHHC works? Yes. Healing does work. I see it happen and do it. That's what I'm talking about. How can we get hair as great as yours? <laughs> Don't cut it for a couple of years and then just see what happens. Stop washing it every day. It doesn't need to be washed every day. Okay. You can, you can take it easy on that shampoo. Okay. <laughs> Try that because the, the natural oil comes through and it, and it allows your hair to just naturally flow. So try that. I mean, start getting that. Make sure you have organic, you know, shampoo and conditioner. Where are we at? Make sure you have that organic stuff. It doesn't have to be organic, but naturally. Don't get all the chemicals in your hair. It's going to start drying up. It's not going to be good. So find a good shampoo and conditioner. I mean, if you really want a good recommendation, DM me and I'll tell you what I use. But I don't remember the name off the top of my head. 
People standing in these places feel a heightened awareness and a physical well-being. True, true. I've experienced it myself. Planetary magnetic fields do affect our physical and spiritual consciousness. Okay, okay, listen, listen. I have found this amazing, amazing research by, um, I can't remember his first name, Shizetsky, um, who did work. He was a Russian scientist. I'll get into it um, definitely down the line, probably about a month from now. But he does has this amazing work how he describes how this when the sun the sun goes through solar cycles right and this is a preview of the work but this is to kind of confirm this right the sun the sun has solar minimums and maximums if you study the sun and every time there's a solar minimum and maximum we have a pattern there is a pattern to what happens on you know minimums and maximums there's you it's literally charted you can see that events like society goes chaotic on certain when the sun when the sun pops off when it gets hotter we feel that energy and there's wars there's wars during those times when the solar maximum comes this is just talking about planetary magnetic fields but remember the magnetic field of the planet is affected by the sun because the sun's giving us that good energy and then you know we feel it i mean why is it so hot you know, I'm in Colorado and it's 95 degrees. What? I feel like, is that is that real? Why is that happening? I feel like it's really warm everywhere. I mean, the solar minimum, I think was 2019. So we're not even into maximum yet. I think maximum is going to come around in 2025. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. But I'll get into that research in another time. You're going to have a ton of messages probably. <laughs> probably. All souls who come to Earth leave a part of their energy behind in the spirit world even living parallel lives in more than one body. Okay, ho, ho, hold the phone. Okay, you can split up your soul, but you can if you are an advanced soul, you can live parallel lives. Okay, think about that. Like, really contemplate that. Like, let's say you leave 10% of your soul in the spirit world, and you're 30-30 you're out here, but you're an advanced soul, so you can do that. So you might have two souls that are the same exact you all right and they're just living out their life somewhere else on the on the earth Woo! lord i mean that's just that's a whole nother level i feel like that's a whole nother level the percentages of energy souls leave behind man i wish they had more time i would have went through and got those spelling errors please forgive me laddies all right <laughs> all right I'm looking at my phone and I'm seeing, is the, are we paused? Are we good? My phone just paused. No, I think we're good. Okay, we're good. It was just my phone. I'm keeping track, you know, one man band. We got to keep track of the live stream on the phone, on the side to make sure we're still good. So this phenomenon, it glitched out for a second. Okay. All right. So we're good. I'm glad I paused then. This phenomenon is analogous to the way light images are split and duplicated in a hologram. So in a hologram, two light images can be duplicated and it's still, is it still, you know, are they different or is it the same light? That's what I'm trying to get at. It's the same. It's just like you are a fractal of the universe. You're still the galaxy. You know, you're still everybody else, but you're just fractalized. And it's interesting because you will not die. You can't die. So imagine if you merge. People are like scared. I don't want to be. I don't merge with other beings. You know, how could, why would I want to do that? And the reason why you'd want to do that is because eventually you're going to realize, okay, well, this is the only thing left. And if it's the only thing left, then I want to do it, of course. And then when I do that, what happens? Well, I actually just gain the memories of them because I am them. So you can't die. You don't lose. You can't not exist. Okay. Is this a recording? No, it's not a recording. We are live. We are live. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways, if someone you love died 30 years ahead of you and has since reincarnated, you can still see them again upon your own return to the spirit world. From a soul in the spirit world. If we were... To bring in 100% of our energy into one body during an incarnation, we would blow the circuits of the brain. You just can't do it. You know, you, you can't bring in the entire portion of your soul. It, like, it's just not possible. 
amnesia, amnesia forces us to go into the testing area of the laboratory of Earth without the answers for the task we were sent here to accomplish. Okay. Just really, really, I'm just giving you a sec to really take that in. Amnesia forces us to go into testing area, just like, just like a, you'd go play a game, without the answers for the task we were sent here to accomplish. So nobody knows the answers when they come in. But in the fourth density, you will. So, so some kids that come in might, might have an idea. Okay. But, and especially if you're tuned in right now, you're going to start to have an idea. Kind of imagine that, like, the, the veil is kind of whoop. It's kind of starting to open up. The gates are starting to open, you know, a little bit. Or actually, it'd probably be that way. <laughs> you're supposed to learn to love yourself and see others and love them too. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. I really want a paranormal experience to confirm to me there's more than just physical. If you want the paranormal experience, you gotta, you gotta let go of wanting it. I know that sounds so stupid, but if you are just like sitting here, this is what I'm, this will happen. This will work for me. Okay. The more that I wanted it, the more I pushed it away. So I just was like, okay, I, I want it. You can still have that desire, but you don't need it to justify something, right? We can understand concepts, but not have a full knowingness yet. But we will push that knowingness away if we say, I need to have this or else. You know, so if you want to have that experience, just allow it to allow it to come, allow it to come. And if it comes, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And then when that happened, boom, I had one. And I went for a trip, a ride in the ethereals. Okay. And trust me, it's there. Amnesia also relieves us of the baggage of past failures. So we may use new approaches with more confidence. And also, I just want you to know, if you're listening to this on the recording, or if you're even if you're here live, you're, you see me looking down, or you don't hear anything for a second, it's because I'm reading the chat. Okay, I'm trying to catch your questions as we go along. Or I'm taking a drink. I'm going to put these on Spotify, too, here pretty soon. So these are the percentages of souls that are this is okay. These are the percentages that the soul takes into the body pertaining to how advanced the soul is. Okay. So a highly advanced soul, 25% or less is how much you're taking into a body. So if you, in layman's terms, if you're an advanced soul, you're not taking more than 25% into the body because you don't need to. Right. And the average soul is taking about 50%, 50 to 70% of their soul into the body, but they're leaving you know, 30%. Again, you cannot fit your entire soul's energy into a body. The brain cannot handle that much energy. A few hours rest from the human body can do wonders for our soul as long as the remaining portion left behind is on cruise control and not coping with complex dream analysis. And dream analysis is an interesting, very, very specialized topic that they go into in the book. But so <laughs> it's important to... You remember how I've done a lot of TikToks about if you're if you're on TikTok, I've done a lot of TikToks about did a couple, not a lot, about dreaming. Why dreaming is so important and getting into that lucid dreaming state so that you can communicate with your energy blockages, with your unconscious, because your unconscious will give you signs in your dreams as to where your energy blockages are. So that's why lucid dreaming is important. And um that's what complex dream analysis means. It means that your soul is analyzing that dream. But a lot of times you'll be like, oh man, I'm not having a dream. What's going on? And it's because you're taking a break. Because it's tough out there sometimes. So just relax yourself into, you know, this human experience. We don't have to take it so serious. Somebody commented on my TikTok today and said, hey, soul halo colors aren't important. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, man, it's not about what's important sometimes because if you're like, I feel like you got to know what's important at this point. And maybe it is important because I feel like there's a level of when, when we get into the soul halo colors, you'll see that it actually really pertains to your life and that 
your halo color is like an is a snapshot of how you are and that's what the levels of consciousness are so it actually is important and we'll get into why that is why do some people say they don't have dreams at all um uh, they could there's a lot of reasons there's a lot of reasons it could be you know a lot of if you have a lot of chemicals in your body you're not detoxing like if you're not doing uh, for example i've done the medical medium heavy metal detox look up the medical medium if you want to get a good detox it's really easy you know drink some celery juice in the morning go get a juicer at walmart it's 90 bucks it's not that expensive and um you know you got to start to detox your body because if you don't it's going to affect you and it's going to affect your dreams and it could be because you're taking different plant medicines because if you you know you take that before bed that's going to shut that portion off of your brain essentially in different ways and that's what i've seen that's what i've heard that's what i'm speculating i don't know that for a fact but i've seen that play out a lot of times so that could be a reason if you're taking pharmaceuticals could be a reason okay so there's a lot of different a lot of different things that come up could be the water you're drinking again get that alkaline goodness for goodness sake <laughs> parallel lives are not common so don't think that everybody does it because it's very hard souls don't wish to lead parallel lives unless they are extraordinarily ambitious I don't even think I'm that ambitious. I don't think that I have, I, it doesn't feel to me when I tune in that I have a parallel right now. Also, souls don't split their energy to incarnate as twins. So twins are not the same soul. If you're going to do, it talks about, there's a case it talks about in the book, I remember, that there's a soul that talks about how if you, it would be kind of pointless to do twins as a, as the same soul because you learn i mean how different is that experience going to be i mean if you're splitting your soul's energy up you're going to want to do two, two very different things so that you learn more because you know that environment is going to be the same with the twins you know uh we dream 10 times a night yes there's a there's a lot of dreaming going on for sure yes wendy i agree <laughs> that's what i'm getting at however with the help of our guides some people have the ability to communicate or temporarily tap into their own energy reserve. So recount from a soul. You know, I didn't, I didn't in the first, first half, I didn't put any, I didn't even put one case study in because I just wanted to get through the generalness of it. But now I feel like there's so much wisdom in the actual case studies. I wanted to include one. Okay. So now we're getting into soul birthing. Okay. Soul birthing is like one of the most fascinating things to me because it's how you came into this reality. All right. So this is a recount from the soul. This is case 26 if you want to look it up in Destiny of Souls. So Dr. N, which is Dr. Newton. So every time it's Dr. N, it's Dr. Newton asking the question, asked as the subject. Dr. N, Sina, what has been your most significant experience between your lives? Because, you know, Dr. Newton is life between lives. S, without hesitation. I go to the place of hatching, where souls are hatched. I am an incubator mother, a kind of midwife. It's not supposed to be a king. It's supposed to be kind. <laughs> Wait, what just happened? Did I just hit a button? Okay. All right, anyways, I think I hit a button. We're good. All right, so, Dr. N, are you telling me you work in a soul nursery? Subject, Yes. We help the new ones emerge. We are facilitating early maturation by being warm, gently, and caring. We welcome them. And this is why we see a lot of people do, you know, our mothers, because maybe you had a, maybe you are practicing, maybe you are learning how to be a mother on earth. And maybe that part of that is you might be specializing as that, as a soul birther. Dr. N. Please explain the surrounding of the place to me. Subject, it's gas-like, a honeycomb of cells with swirling currents of energy above. There is intense light. Dr. N, when you say honeycomb, I wonder if you mean the nursery has a beehive structure or what? Subject, um, yes. Although the nursery itself is a vast emporium without seeming to be limited by outside dimension, the new souls have their own incubator cells. And so you get put in an incubator cell, just like in the, in the hospital. That's what you get put in. Where the stay, where they stay until their growth 
is sufficient to be moved away from the emporium. Dr. Ann, and it gets, it gets good, I promise. Stick with me. As an incubator mother, when do you see first see the new souls? We are in the delivery suite, which is a part of the nursery. At one end of the emporium, the newly arrived ones are conveyed as small masses of white energy encased in a gold sack. They move slowly in a majestic, orchestrated line of progression toward us. Dr. N, from where? Subject. As our end of the emporium, as, yeah, as the end of the emporium, under an archway, the entire wall is filled with a molten mass of high inten intensity energy and vitality. It feels as if it's energized by an amazing love force rather than a discernible heat source. So let me explain this. Imagine, imagine this behind me. You see this? Imagine there's a, a wall, like a literal energy wall that is pulsing out souls. Whew. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. And it's not a heat source. It's love that's emanating from it. The mass pulsates and undulates in a beautiful flowing motion. Its color is like that on the inside of your eyelids if you were to look through your closed eyes at the sun on a bright day. Interesting. Interesting description. Dr. N. And from out of this mass, you see souls emerge? Subject. From the mass, a swelling behind, never exactly from the same site twice. The swelling increases and pushes outward, becoming a formless bulge. The separation is a wondrous moment. A new soul is born. It's totally alive with an energy and distinctness of its own. So literally, oh, that's so, so how you came into the universe, let's say, and the, you can't, you got into the lobby was you, you pulsed out. This is how fractalization occurred as let's say, let's say that the galaxy is splitting itself up. Earth, right? It'd probably be the earth or the solar system, right? Not sure on that, but some, a source energy is pulses out and it bulges out never in the same spot along this this entire beautiful wall that had the frequency of love and it pulses out a soul. Okay. And so this, that, that's just incredible to me. So this is a different explanation and it's more summarized. Before I was assigned to my soul group and began coming to earth, I remember being given the opportunity to experience a semi-physical world as a light form. I saw other young souls with me and we could move easily around the ground as luminous bulbs with semblance of the human form. Does it sound like the movie Soul? I mean, it sounds, that's exact. Like this came out way before Soul. Way before. I mean, I think there's some distortion in Soul. You know how in Soul, if you've seen the movie, it tries to tell you that the whole, the whole villain essentially of the movie is that he has to merge with Source. But that never happens. You don't, you don't merge with Source unwillingly, right? It's free will. So, yeah, it definitely sounds exactly like And if you haven't seen that movie, I would definitely recommend it. It's a kid's movie, but it's still good. There are people who have the belief... Is it a kid's movie, though? <laughs> there are people that have the belief that all memories are carried by DNA. But to say that all past life memory is actually genetic in origin, carried in our DNA cells from remote ancestors, is an argument that, for me fails in several ways we're talking about memory okay unconscious memories of past life trauma are capable of carrying a severely damaged physical imprint of that long dead body into our new body but this is not the result of dna so-called genetic memory is actually soul memory emanating from the unconscious mind so right, we're talking about right now how 
your soul memory. There's no okay. Let's just finish this part of the slides and then I'll tell you what I'm talking about. All right, and that was that was the first half. Now I'm gonna switch to the second half of the slides. Boom. Okay, now we've made it to the second portion of the show tonight. All right, brilliant. Let's see. Let me pull up the right thing. Okay, there we go. What about conjoined twins? Yeah, conjoined twins are exactly what I was talking about. It wouldn't be the same soul. All right, so memory is divided into three categories. So this is really interesting. Conscious memory is number one. This is the one that we know of, right? That we that we experience daily. This state of thought would apply to all memories retained by the brain in our biological body. It is manifested by a conscious ego self that is perceptive and adaptive to our physical planet. Conscious memory is influenced by sensory experiences and all our biological primitive instinctual drives as well as emotional experiences. So there's a lot that influences the conscious mind. But remember, like I was telling you, like the conscious mind is very much is at a uh, at a point where it can take what the uh, what the body ego mind, like like what it says here, primitive instinctual drives that are and sensory experiences are biological. That's exactly what I'm saying. That the ego the ego mind is going to have an opinion. And then that the conscious mind can take that as fact. And when it does that, then you suffer. A lot of times. Sometimes, I mean, it helps because it's trying to keep you alive, right? There's nothing wrong with it. It's what it's meant to do. It can be fault because, okay, it's meant to do that because, you know, when we're younger and when we don't know or when the species was trying to survive, we needed that ego. We, we weren't worried about being loving. And, you know, that's the evolution of consciousness. That's the evolution of... Humanity and the planet is getting to that point where we can move from surviving, surviving to thriving or surviving to the heart, you know, to opening up and being compassionate. And the patriarchal kind of essence, the divine feminine is leading that. So it can be faulty because there are defense mechanisms related to what it receives and evaluates through impressions from the five senses, which is, that's his wording for the exact, exactly what I was saying. Immortal memory. Okay, so conscious memory, then you have immortal memory. Memories in this category appear to come through the subconscious mind. Subconscious thought is greatly influenced by body functions not subject to conscious control, such as heart rate and glandular functions. However, it can also be the selective storeroom of conscious memory. Immortal memory carries the memories of our origins in this life and in other physical lives. So if you want to connect to your past life, you're getting into immortal memory. It is the repository of much of our psyche in, because the subconscious mind forms the bridge between the conscious and the superconscious. So you can call this subconscious or the immortal memory it's the same thing you have the conscious subconscious super conscious which is what we talked about in the first one right and the bridge is is the past lives and is what's happening right now and, and obviously that's all stored in subconscious so you have the divine memory now these are the memories that emanate from our super conscious mind which houses the soul which if conscious intuition and imagination are expressed through the subconscious mind they are drawn from this higher source so you're getting inspiration from, you know you're having a lot of imaginative you know visionary thoughts your third eye right maybe then that's coming from divine memory our our eternal soul mind has evolved from superior conceptual thought energy beyond ourselves Inspiration may seem to spring from immortal memory, but there is a higher intelligence outside of our body-mind which forms a part of divine memory. The source of these divine thoughts is elusive. Sometimes we conceive it as a personal memory when actually divine memory represents communication from beings in our 
immortal existence. So that's how spirit guides come in, talk to us through immortal, immortal memory, and then it comes in, we might have inspiration. I mean, this is what Dolores Cannon talks about when she says, a lot of people get the same invention at the same time because the egregore thought form that is trying to penetrate the planet of inventions for evolution is coming through, but it's coming through as inspiration. That's why the typewriter was invent was invented at the same time by multiple people. You know, and there's been different inventions that have been invented at the same time. And that's how, because let's say that thought form or the inspiration comes from their guide, that this needs to be brought in, but there's going to be discrepancy between who hears it and who doesn't. And if two people listen to the call, then they're going to invent the same thing. Halos. Halo colors are undiluted by tints or shades of other colors, as can be the case with central core colors. So you have your core color, then you have your halo color. These can, do, these can be different, but they can also be the same, as this slide says. During a hypnosis session, these secondary halo colors are like flashing self-portraits the moment the observer sees them. The halo colors represent attitudes, beliefs, and even unattained aspirations of the soul. Okay, so this is the map of consciousness that I made based on the work of Dr. David Hawkins. All right, so let's let's see this here. So the halo colors, let's read this again. The halo colors represent attitudes, beliefs, and even unattained aspirations of the soul. Okay, so attitudes, beliefs, boom, map of consciousness. This is where your attitudes and beliefs are. This is where, you know, I'm going to get, I'm definitely going to do hours and hours on this map because it's, you can learn so much just from this. And so what is this, what I'm trying to get at is that your halo can match your emotional, your halo matches your emotional state. That's really what it is in simple terms. So if you're feeling like you're encouraged, you're feeling neutrality, maybe you're feeling really heart centered, you know, your halo might be green, right? Because as we see, hopefully I have the slide here. Yeah, it's right here. Okay. As we see here, the color meanings in halos and in general, so this is just in general for the spirit world. And when we see halos, uh, this is what kind of the knowledge represents of their emotional state. So I feel like these, when you actually look at these, like if you're looking at these right now, like white being purity, clarity, restlessness, I'll go through them because of if we're, if we're listening on Spotify. Silver is more ethereal, trust, flexibility. Red is passionate, intensity, sensitivity can be sensitivity hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. interesting orange exuberant impulsive openness and we can kind of see these correlating with your chakras if you know the chakra system you're gonna see a lot of this with the different colors of the chakras that they correlate yellow protective just like for example if you're shot if you're in the solar plexus chakra the third chakra right which is third chakra up right here you're gonna be feeling a lot of desire anger pride what is that does that make protective yes because if you're in anger desire or if you're in anger desire or pride a lot of times you're protective right you're protective of your desires you're protective of somebody if you're angry you're protective of something that you believe in so these correlate with the chakras too so green healing nurturing compassion brown grounded yes we are grounded Tolerant, industrious. I don't even know how that word correlates, but blue, knowledge, forgiveness, revelation. And purple, wisdom, truth, divinity. All right. Are you aware of Declaration of Sovereignty? If someone defies it, what is it? I, I'm not aware of that specific terms. I mean, if you're talking about like cutting, like cord cutting, that's kind of what that reminds me of. Um, but not, not aware in that in that system or that way isn't this oddly familiar to the levels of consciousness and like we just talked about i wanted to tell you that twice apparently specializations all right so here we are we are in the home stretch here and so i just kind of figured one of the most interesting parts of destiny of souls to me was the different specializations and i want you to know that there's a lot in that book that I didn't talk about tonight. So definitely, definitely worth checking out. It's worth reading, worth listening to, and get it on um, 
you can get it on audiobook format and then the guy who reads it on audiobook format it's just great so all right so let's get into nursery teachers all right so we're starting off simple and then we're ending at time masters all right because it gets the most complex but i didn't i didn't order them i ordered them the same way he ordered them so i didn't change that so nursery teachers are brand new teachers in training they are called nursery teachers or caretakers of children because the young souls that they work with have not yet begun their incarnations so if you're trying to learn how to be a teacher or a guide you're going to start as a nursery teacher because you got to learn how to teach people outside of incarnations before you start teaching them while they're incarnated and that can be you can be teaching them as an incarnated being or you can be teaching them as a non-incarnated being as their guide so you can guide people in 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 this reality and be with them a large majority of my clients are inclined toward teacher training to be guides so a lot of a lot of souls choose guides all right so ethicists this is interesting it wasn't what i thought it was i learned of and dorado's interest <laughs> nailed it and how planetary magnetic energy affects intelligent behavior on certain worlds so this is what i was getting at with the sun and i was getting at with the human residents and how this affects human behavior ethicists kind of get into that a lot of uh morality and it talks about and we'll get i'll just it it's in the slide <laughs> getting ahead of myself here dr n what is the most helpful advice you give your students before they come back to earth subject grins they are like racehorses so i caution them to be patient and pace themselves the energy that goes into controlling the human body must be parceled out carefully what a word they are at the stage of learning the fine balance of ethical behavior when they live in a physical world as dense as earth they must guard against being absorbed by it in order to be effective and that's i think that's what you're getting at wendy with like you got to protect yourself right and also know if you're trying to talk about how somebody if somebody infringes upon your free will like what happens right they get that karma boom instant karma what is instant karma i'm saying they've racked it up and we don't know how it's going to play out necessarily but they've accrued that and that that of that consequence of them being that way is one one it gives you an opportunity to to understand and love them for who they are so it does give you a lesson but also it just doesn't go karma just doesn't say all right well i guess i guess they're fine <laughs> no it's much more much more than that okay so yeah we hit that slide all right this this specialty represents a broad classification of souls with many subgroups souls so we're in harmonizer souls now okay souls in the general category of harmonizers often incarnate as communicators working in a variety of capacities when they are discarnated beings i am told they work as restorers of disrupted disrupted energy on the face of the planet they might be statesmen prophets inspirational messengers negotiators artists musicians and writers Whew. there's a lot of different things that they are so just imagine that as a harmonizer soul you're communicating in some way instead of choosing to heal people like through the body environment you're healing them by communicating some sort of wisdom to them that's really all it is typically they are souls who balance the energy of a planetary events involving human relationships which is what i'm saying they help with human they're in relationships with people to give them wisdom and that can be through music it doesn't have to be a personal relationship these souls are not healers in the traditional mode of working with individuals because harmonizers function on a larger scale in attempting to diffuse negative energy right you're working on a much larger scale if you're trying to help the planet right if you're if you're making content that has wisdom versus helping people one-on-one -on -one in in as a healer 
but it's not to say because you know i i still do one-on-one sessions and i think they i help a lot of people through those but it's not to say that doesn't work but also you find that a lot of times healers they have to work one-on-one -on -one, right but as a harmonizer soul you can still do the one-on-ones but you can also you know blossom out into this wisdom that you share and that could actually be wisdom on how to heal right <laughs> or it could be wisdom on how to diffuse negative energy so essentially as a harmonizer soul you're giving people you're you're giving people tools to clear their own energy. And that's how you diffuse negative energy through your, um, obviously your own, your own heart and your own centeredness, but you're also doing it because you're able to give people the, the tools to do it, which is what I'm trying to do, right? I'm trying to give you, I'm not trying to convince you of anything, right? I'm trying to give you an understanding so that you can perceive the world from a place of peace or from a place where it's empowering at least. Right to know that you aren't subject to some hell somewhere. I mean, it's not going to happen, right? And so, just understanding that is so empowering to me. In my first book, I wrote about the sages who are highly advanced souls that are still incarnating on Earth, even though it is unnecessary for their own personal development. Okay, okay, I'm talking. We're talking about Law of One. This is this is like wanderers. Okay, it's the same thing. It doesn't have to be sages, but the, a lot of times sages do are the ones that come vol voluntarily. But it doesn't have to be. You don't have to be a sage. I mean, in 1981, there was 65 million wanderers. 65 million. I mean, and wanderers are higher density beings that came to help. So not all of those are sages. I can guarantee you. Right. <laughs> How do we decipher which one we're working towards? Well, what you need to do is just honestly be very open when you're listening to this and you're going to find out which one you're the most interested in. And I would definitely go read the book, right? Because to me, I feel like I've really stepped into the the role of, uh, you know, doing what the Harmonizer Soul is about. Oh, I got an itch right here. I don't know what's going on. But... To me, I resonate with Harmonizer because I feel like that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm I'm sharing this wisdom with you with unattachment to how you receive it because it's not about the results, about how it's it's about just giving it to you. And that's what Harmonizer souls do. Be, like from the slide. It's it is evident to my subjects that sages are somehow connected to another group of harmonizer specialists in the spirit world whom they call the watchers. Okay, the watchers are real. Because, you know, I, I know there's some there's some stuff coming out about the Watchers. So that is inspired by this to me. These beings do not reincarnate, but receive information from many sources about conditions on Earth, as well as worlds as well. So, so Watchers receive information from a, a lot of different areas, but they don't come into the body, and then they relay that information to the Harmonizers. Presumably, a watcher provides information to other harmonizers who will act to moderate the effects of social and physical forces creating havoc on Earth. After listening to explanations of a number of harmonizer souls, I have come to believe that those spiritual masters who designed this laboratory of chaos we call Earth did not set things in motion and then walk away. They're still here in some form or somebody's taken over for them. Just like... Things can't run unless there's somebody to make sure it runs okay a lot of times. I mean, in a perfect system, I mean, let's not get semantics about it. But a lot of times you're going to, you know, if you want your business to run well, you're going to have to manage it, right? But it, I'm not saying that Earth is a business. It's just a, it's a metaphor to kind of help you to see that, you know, this isn't just evolution. Oh, figure it out. You got to figure it out. Everybody's got to figure it out themselves. No, that's not what it's about. It's about you have guidance, you have spirit guides, you have a plan, you have things that you came into this life to learn only. Some beings, many beings are not going to learn anything near fourth density in this life because they're newly incarnated souls that were created in order to fulfill the bodily roles and they haven't had that many experiences. So those souls are probably aren't going to be able to move on to fourth density during this life. And that's okay. That's fine. So just know that there's some that are on low, low third density and then there's some that are like, See ya. I'm fourth. Let's go. 
Like the law of one talks about how souls incarnated just specifically for fourth density that are incarnated right now. That you might be here because you're ready for fourth density, not you're just getting into third. Some are just just got on the roller coaster, right? They just got tall enough to get on. And there's you know, see, that's a perfect analogy that just came out of nowhere. I've never heard that before. But imagine third density is kind of like a roller coaster. And if you're low third density, you're getting on, you're like, oh my god you know you're just screaming your face off because you don't like it so much but then when you get to high third density you start to and when you're high third density getting into fourth you're like all right baby let's get on this ride let's just enjoy it you know we're here and it feels good to get on these roller coasters of emotions and you know this roller coaster of a life but i'm not taking it too serious because i know it's not serious but you know the third density being that's just starting to incarnate is going to be like oh my god this life sucks karma is terrible everybody's suffering this is really bad i can't take it oh i need to fight i need to fight i need to fight boom so <laughs> you could see there's a massive difference between third density kind of starting and then the ending you're like oh okay this is all right and you learn to love it even though it's kind of difficult you learn to love it in a way, you know, because you see that there's bliss is available. That's what sages are, right? That bliss is available right now. Peace is available right now. And they've decided, okay, yeah, the world might be suffering, but I choose love. I choose p peace, bliss, you know, whatever it might be that they choose, you know, those higher level frequencies because it, they're not bypassing, they're integrating. They, they're sending so much love out, hit out that they're through their aura. They're actually affecting the collective consciousness of mankind that they don't even have to do anything it's really funny because i on a when you get to the higher levels of consciousness like uh enlight close to enlightenment or enlightenment you know you start to even in states of not conditional love not like 500 i'm talking about like 540 unconditional love when you get to unconditional love you start to affect the world more than you ever could as somebody who talked about things you affect it way more through your actual energy because think about the difference between courage at 10 to the 200th, right? Versus 10 to the 540th, 540 zeros behind one. What? Like, instead of 200, think about how much more energy that is. So, harmonizer souls are affecting the planetary consciousness through their own vibration. I mean, how incredible is that? That's, that's the next level stuff. You know, so, so true, bittersweet, who are sad to see it go. That's what I'm saying. That some people are like, this is like, oh man, I don't even want to stop reincarnating. I think this world is beautiful. I got people, when I was talking on that reincarnations and illusions video, I was talking about how, do you wish to stop reincarnating? And I had a lot of people comments that were like, I, why would you want to stop reincarnating? This is fun. This is good. And then I get a lot of people that are the opposite. They're like, Oh my word, I just, I never want to come back to this planet again. Why did I choose this life? This is so bad. Like, the spectrum is there, right? And and as I was talking about recently, the different archetypes playing out, right? We can see that happening through people. They're on the hero's journey, right? Somebody might be on one part of the hero's journey where they're like, hey, the second part of the hero's journey is refusal to call, right? You hear the call to adventure, then, then refusal, if I remember right. And so... If you're refusing the call, then that's probably why you want to leave. Because you're refusing the call, right? You're on that part of the hero's journey. Then you meet the mentor, then you're like, hey, let's go. Right? That's how that's how it's always written, right? That's the galactic, you could say personality, but more system in which we experience. That the hero's journey is actually a beautiful journey in which we out, we always get what we want if we're willing to be humble and courageous. Right? Because when when we get to courage, it starts at truth and being responsible for what's happened by not playing the victim. It's like you move from force. You have force when you're the victim think you were for. Okay. So think about power starts at courage. And again, I'm going to get the, I'm going to get the levels of consciousness behind me and I'm going to start like pointing, pointing to them so you can see it better. I will do a better job next time. I promise with that on the visuals, but I'll at least have it on the screen until I get the poster. But anyways, when you're when you're in victim mode you're you're saying that things were forced to you 
But when you take your, that's why it's power. That's why Dr. Hawkins came out with the book, Power Versus Force, because power starts at courage, because then you have power because you're no longer a victim. And if you're in pride, anger, fear, guilt, apathy, hopelessness, you know, shame, that you're a victim. You don't have that power, but true power starts when you take responsibility. Okay. There it is. All right. After listening to explanations of a number of harmonized souls. Okay. We, we did this slide. All right. So there is our superior beings who care enough about our survival to watch over us. Frankly, for much of my life, I did not believe this could be true because he was an atheist. Remember when he started this, he started as none, none of it. He was like, no, 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 <laughs> and then he stumbled into somebody he was doing, you know, regression, but then it went into a past life and then it went into the spirit world on accident. You know, he just kind of stumbled across this. I don't mind the thought of coming back to earth to learn more, or I don't mind the thought of coming back to learn more, just not on earth. Savage. <laughs> hey, you know, you get that choice. You get that choice. The explorers, as we'll get there, will find those other worlds for you. How many people's vibration do you raise when you are at a thousand? Okay, so here's the thing: when you are, when you're at a thousand, like there's only like four people. No, they're not even people, right? When you get to a level of enlightenment, which starts at seven hundred, can I, can I go back here? Let's see if I can go back. Okay. Oh, okay. We got the yeah. Let's just let's just pull it out for a sec. So, enlightenment starts at seven hundred plus seven hundred to seven hundred to a thousand is the max in uh, in this life okay so your body can't handle more than a thousand if it and what happens is the tibetan rainbow bodies your body disintegrates that's what that's exactly what you ever think about that the tibetan monks that just have the the rainbow bodies the reason that their body disintegrates is because they're doing what dr michael newton's saying which is they're bringing more of their soul's essence they're more energy than the body can handle it blows the circuits of the brain the body disintegrates that's an, a real life example that that happens. You can research that. Okay. So when you're, when you reach the vibration of 700, there's no you, right? You're gone. Nobody can claim enlightenment. Like I definitely am not there. And there, nobody can claim enlightenment because there, when you are actually in the enlightened state, there's nobody there anymore to claim it. Cause you, you have become one with God. All right. So you can experience enlightened states. That's why one time I let go of everything and I experienced what I termed as enlightened, an enlightened state, but I was not enlightened because no, I can be enlightened because the ego dissolves in enlightenment. So I have a YouTube video on that. Um, my experience with that, if you're interested more in that, but how many people's vibrations do you raise when you're at a thousand? I mean, I don't know if there's a specific number, but just imagine it like, the people who are, because we're in a collective consciousness of courage right now, the people that are at, who are higher on the pyramid, okay, imagine as a teeter-totter, that's what I'm trying to say. Teeter-totter goes like this, right? You got people over here that are in states of like love, courage, neutrality, willingness, acceptance, love, joy, peace. These people are like carrying, they're pulling up this end of all these people that are, you know these people, that are angry, you know, that are super fearful, their grief, sadness, all these guilt, shame, right? They're pulling up these other people. I'm trying to keep my the mic open, but they're trying to pull these people up and that's kind of what's happening. And that these people are starting to come over to the other side and then eventually the the consciousness of human of humankind, or humanity, starts to lean more towards love, joy, peace. But you as a being, I don't I don't know the specifics of how many you're going to help, but it's it's just a lot, a lot. It's a lot, a lot, a lot. It's actually, okay, this is the last thing I'll say about it, that the the people that have reached a thousand are Jesus Christ, the Buddha, and um, Krishna. And I think I think Zor, Zoroaster might as well. Don't quote me on that. But I know it's at least those three great avatars. And those avatars reached oneness with God or with spirit, source, the universe. The galactic logos, as the law of one would say that they became one with that and that love is love is the same thing as enlightenment in a sense but lo it's it's a love that's past love on this chart it's like a un it's like um a, a love that you can't even explain that's what enlightenment would be because it's essentially god's source okay 
So hopefully that makes sense that when you connect to that, it's actually said in the levels of consciousness, in the book, that without those great avatars, humanity would have already been extinct because the planet's vibration wouldn't have been high enough. It's not possible, right? So those avatars helped so much that they helped, three helped humanity and made humanity able to, to survive as a species. Because one, if, if humanity didn't get to the level of courage, you wouldn't be able to survive because courage is at the point where you're not going to, you're not going to extinct yourself as a species. But if you're in pride, it can still happen. And it's really dangerous for it to happen. Heard 2 million, a thousand. Uh, I'm not sure. Like I said, I don't know the exact number. Thank you. You're welcome. You are so welcome. All right. Let me, let me see if I can get to the exact slide. How's that? Okay. I think I'm almost there. Almost there. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. I think this is one. They wish to give people the means to help themselves where they can, but they are not the conscious of human beings and they do not interfere with our free will. Right. Because the whole point of this is to have free will. I mean, how fun would the game be if you didn't have free will? That's why it's like, yeah, it kind of sucks that they're suffering, but at least you have the free will to choose between suffering and not suffering. Imagine what life would be like if you just had no suffering, but you didn't even know not suffering. So what, how could you enjoy it? And that's a really deep one. If you can really contemplate that suffering, like, you know, how good love feels because of how bad you felt. Really? Like, if you really think about that, really contemplate it. Because that can really change your life to understand that. Because then you won't see suffering as this negative thing. Because as long as you see suffering as this bad thing, then there's always going to be this back and forth polarity. Oh, I'm really sad, really happy. But if you can just learn to enjoy it all, or rather integrate it all, then you're practicing alchemy in, in a sense, and, and you're transmuting that, that suffering into a lesson into a love, which is what it truly is behind. It's like love disguised as whatever it is. But really, whatever's happening in your life is there to teach you that lesson. And so if you can start to start to see suffering in that way, then it's really profound. Uh, and that, that will teach you how to be able to help others, right? So suffering, it's like, why do we suffer? Why did negative things happen? They happen so that we can learn from them and we can understand the fullness of ourself because we are it all. As I said, seven sacred bodies, Corpus Christi, you are the galaxy. So if you really wanted to understand the, the galaxy in its fullness, you had to experience it fully. And you are, you know, props to you for being here. Dolores Cannon talks about how this is like, you're brave for even being alive for right now because there are so many beings that wouldn't even incarnate because of how hard it is right now. So give yourself a break. You know, you're doing great. You really are. We were created and sent to Earth to problem solve within the matrix of an intelligent life form living in a difficult environment. This is about us. So it's about you. So we as in you and me were created and sent to Earth to problem solve with them within the matrix of an intelligent life form living in a difficult environment, which involves suffering, but also great beauty and promise. Right. That's what I'm saying there. It's like you can see two people can see the same thing and somebody can say, oh, that's beautiful. And somebody be like, oh, it's boring. Right? Eh, whatever. I want to go back to the city. No, th this sunrise is beautiful. Nah, nah, I got other things to do. Right. That's that's life. And it's beautiful to understand that because then you can start to see that you get to decide everything in your life. You get to decide how your past is. You can change your past by deciding to look at it differently. I mean, that's just wild to really think you you can time travel in a sense. It is this balance that we must recognize in our day-to-day -day reality. There is an old Chinese proverb that states, we count our miseries carefully and accept our blessings without much thought. I feel that so deep, literally. I've, I've done that so many times in my life where I see, man, like today, the car had a, like I was late for this live an hour and a half. I had to reschedule. Still here though, still here. I had to reschedule because the the car warning light, check engine warning, get it, take it to take it to a repair shop immediately. And like I'm like, oh, I'm in the middle of nowhere, Colorado. I'm in the mountains of Colorado. Like, how can I even make it? Started to freak out. Oh, this sucks. Why did this have to happen? You know. And then then I was late, and I was like, man, I really wanted to do it at six, 
And it's like, I, I kept focusing so much on that, but I didn't even, the, one of the first things, one of the first things that I thought about this situation was, man, I, I did, there was two ways that I could go literally when I was there, I got out of the dispersed camping area, which is free camping, beautiful, beautiful area. It's like miles and miles of free land. And so I was completely off grid and I could go this way. I'd go this way or this way, really. And I decided the last second, I want to go this way. And then the check engine light came on as soon as I went that way. You know what that could have been? Like, really consider this could happen to you. This is what helps me to take myself out of my ego when I have these situations happen. That 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 and check engine light could have came on because maybe I would have gotten a car crash if I went that way. Maybe something happened that way. Maybe I would have ran into a deer. Maybe something something was not good that way. And so it gave me a check engine light when I went to Ace Hardware, tried to figure it out, tried to add oil, didn't think it was the oil. I got a code reader. I figured it out. And eventually, you know what's wild? The check engine light turned off when I almost got here three and a half hours later. You know, it was five hours total, but so that's the, the light turned off and I didn't even do anything. So why, why did that happen? Like, well, I have to think, you have to think about like, maybe there's more than just me getting punished or this stupid thing happening to me. Maybe, maybe it's not happening to me. Maybe it's happening for me. Maybe it's happening for me that, you know, think about this. Think about that in your life. What are some things in your life right now that, you know, feels like, oh, like I wish this wouldn't have been happening. But what if that is really there to teach you something or to give you, help you to see that you count your miseries carefully and accept their blessing without much thought? That's me sometimes. I mean, no, I don't identify it as it. I don't identify as it all the time, but I know that that's something that happens to me. You know, I'd have missed it if you kept the original time. So I'm glad you were late. <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> Let's go. If it could have happened any other way, it would have. Yes. It's always when I say, when I start spiraling. Perfect. Perfect. That's brilliant advice. Two major subdivisions of souls. So, okay, that was harmonizer souls. We've been on that one for a while. And it said that a lot of souls choose guides and harmonizers, but it's not like they don't choose these other ones. So we have masters of design, which is also very interesting. I think this would be very fun. So there's two major subdivisions of souls who choose this. There's purely structural specialists, and there's those who create living things within these settings. So you have people... I don't want people, but souls that either choose, I want to build like the, the terrain. I want to build the mountains and not the trees because that's a living being. I want to build the mountains, the, you know, the oceans, that kind of thing of a planet. And then you're going to have souls that they want to build the living beings. We find that. Okay. How do I say this? The being that they don't create the soul. They create the container for the soul if you're creating living things. For example, if you're making a species, let's say the person that made the possum. I don't know why the possum is sticking out to me. They're not making a soul. They're making the body. Okay, so you're not... There's another level in which you do that, but at the beginning, you're, you're just making the body. Okay. So... Those souls who are involved with the creation of life forms are engaged with worlds where new life is evolving. Some are assigned, I don't know why I read that backwards. Some are assigned to work in a physical universe, frequently with uninhabited planets in the process of cooling after being formed out of stars. So once the, the stars form the planet, then the planet has to be molded into something that will eventually form something that's Earth-like or doesn't have to be... Earth-like as in it supports life. I mean, it doesn't have to be oxygen, wa like water in that way. I don't, I don't know. You know, I'm not a master of design. I'm looking at the replay and I'm looking at how much I use my hands. I'm like, I'm like all over the place. Oh, it's funny. They use energy for designing of planetary geology. So you're using, you're manipulating energy to design planets or the terrain. This would include mountains, bodies of water, atmosphere, and climate. Plants, trees, and living creatures is considered to be a separate classification of design. 
So I'm told they are capable of bridging universes that seem not to have a beginning or an end, exacting their purposes among countless environmental settings. So this is why time is infinite and you don't have to learn your lessons in any time in particular, because it, you can, there, more universes can just be created. It's not like, okay, well, this universe is like, oh, well, maybe the, you know, this, the third, okay, let's say fourth density ascension happens. Third density is no longer on it is uninhabitable for third density. Well, there, you can just build more universe. You can build more planets. Like it's not like it's not possible. Okay. And if you are designing a universe, you're going to understand that, you know, let's say the earth is going to go through this transition into fourth density. You're going to understand that there needs to be somewhere for these, other, these, I don't know how many people there are going to be, but for these beings to go and finish their lessons. So you're going to have a planet ready. People ask me what, well, when this event happens, where, where, if the solar flash happens, where are these entities going to go that don't, don't make it to fourth density or haven't chosen service to others? And I'm telling you, they're going to go to another third density planet. I don't have the specifics, right? But in, in Journey of Souls, when, when beings are questioned or rather, I don't know about question. Well, it's more in Destiny of Souls, actually. Beings are questioned about like, where is your planet located? And literally, they're not, they can't remember the specifics or they won't say. So just know that. Like it's, it's, you're not supposed to know. These designs relate to the formation of geometric shapes that float as elastic patterns, which contribute to the building blocks of a living universe. These designs relate to the formation of, ge okay. The same slide. Come on, man. I consider most people who gain experience in different environments outside the spirit world between lives to be a type of explorer soul. Okay, we're on to explorers. I also have clients who engage in temporary work assignments between lives that involve travel. So explorer souls are going to be beings that a lot of times unincarnated are going to be moving. You're going to be moving in between dimensions, uh, interdimensional travel, and also between the same dimension, but, you know, different planets. Explorer souls in training travel to physical and mental worlds in our universe and even into other dimensions. This is actually interesting because think about, if you think about evolution, think about how the earth was a physical world and now it's transitioning into a mental world. Because with the internet, it's not physical. It's not really about like how strong you are, right? That's what physical worlds are. You know, it's more lower three chakras, but the mental world is like, how can you handle the, the emotions? How can you handle, you know, society? That's when it's like a mental game. So earth is moving into a mental game more than a physical. It's both right now, but it'll be more definitely getting more to the mental. You can create new maps. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Nice. I picture a full fledged explorer soul as a highly specialized non-incarnated being who seeks out suitable training sites for the less experienced souls and then eventually leads them to these regions. So remember how in the comments you were saying I would reincarnate in the chat, you were saying you would reincarnate, but not on earth. Well, this is what explorer souls are meant to do. They're meant to guide you to the other planets that you can get lessons on. I mean, you don't have to do it on earth. It's not, it's not required in any means. Okay. Case 60. Between my lives on earth, I visit a water world called Anturium, which is so restful after a difficult life on land. Anturium has only one land mass, the size of Iceland. So this is a different planet that you would go to for rest. I come with a few of my friends who also have an affinity to water. We are brought by an explorer guide who is familiar with this region. I was told that to become an explorer, I would have to experience many realities by beginning my travels to physical worlds and then escalating to mental existences and interdimensional travel. Because you got to understand how to be on a physical world and how to cope with it. And then you can add in the mental aspect. From the accounts I've heard, 
the interdimensional travelers must also learn about the surface boundaries of zones connecting universes as hikers locating trailheads between mountain ranges. So that's how complex it is. Hmm. Track. Okay, so, so that was it on Explorers. So Explorers, yeah, to sum it up, they're interdimensional travelers that scope out. They do recon, right? They're basically the scout to see what would work best. What? So you have the archivists, which I didn't put in here, but those are the beings that are in like the libraries and help souls to reflect by showing them their books or their potentials and, you know, things that could happen. And also I talked about keepers and neutrality in there as well. Um, there's also retrievers of lost souls. I, I don't want to forget about this. Retrievers of lost souls are are literally specialized souls that, and we talked about in the first part, that so there's souls that don't want to go back to the spirit world. And these are what are ghosts, right? Because they're so upset with what happened that they want to punish some people, others, they don't want people to go near certain sites, whatever it might be. They're just traumatized. So the retriever of the lost soul has specialized in getting those beings to the healing station or to the keeper of neutrality or whatever, 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 wherever it needs to go to heal. So, yeah, I, I just forgot that. It's in there. So, all right. So time masters. This is the last one. Track timelines of the immediate future for bodies under consideration in the life selection room. So time masters literally go into time to check out bodies to see if it would be a good fit for a soul. Subject, time training is conducted at a temple. Okay, I don't know, apparently misspelled there. At a temple, we call it temple of time. Okay, apparently double misspelled. Did it autocorrect me? What the heck? Where teachers instruct us in the application of energy sequences for events. Dr. N, what are sequences? Subject. Timelines exist as energy sequences of events which move. Okay, so this is like breaking down time here. All right, and I feel like there's a lot of people that struggle with this concept, but really, like, think about this. Time is just an, a sequence of energy that moves that we experience just like I was talking about. You have a video game time where the sun might go up and down, but then you have a soul time, which is like now time. And so timeline in the game is just like an, a sequence of events which move. And then... You know, the time masters specialize in this. So, Dr. N, tell me how you manipulate energy in the timelines. Subject. Time is manipulated by compressing and stretching energy particles within a unified field to regulate its flow, like playing with rubber bands. So, you might take a timeline, you may go, whoop, right? And then you, you see how it plays out. You watch it play out as a time master. And then you're like, okay, then you put it back. Dr. N, can you change events in the past, present, and future? Is that what you mean by manipulation? Subject, no, I can only monitor energy sequences. We operate as highwaymen who enter and exit the sequences. So they, they're they monitoring it, at least at this time, Master, this this person who, this case I remember, this time this time master specifically that you're talking to is not that advanced so doesn't know that much because time masters aren't incarnating that often honestly first time mary meet all megan welcome 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 so we operate as highwaymen who enter and exit the sequences which we consider roads by speeding up and slowing down condensing our energy speeds up and the expansion slows us down okay so they're manipulating energy to look at so in simple terms they're manipulating energy to look at time sequences and to go into time check it out see if it would be a good fit for a soul or not or which soul it would be a good fit for it's the same thing with events and people who appear on the sequences as points in the roads we don't create anything we just observe because the point is is to observe it to see how it work how it would work you know, so healers. So this is just healers in general. Specialize in restoring damaged energy in the spirit world. More than likely practicing some form of healing slash energy modality on earth. 
so so healers can be like i was talking about before you can have a bot a healer of the body or you can have a healer of the environment like a planetary healer i have learned the earth itself has its own vibrational rate and there are people capable of tuning into the ecological energy so they can tune into the energy of the earth so this is this is somebody who's in the spirit world subject my study group works with energy differently we are healers of plants trees and the land that is why we pick lives as caretakers of the environment usually work in the outdoors and can physically heal the environment with their energy through hands i mean if you've ever really i mean i've been there i i don't know if i'm specialized in it necessarily but if you really go out and you tune in to nature you will start to see like little dots appear on your hand not dots but like your hands will i don't even know how to describe it it's like your skin tone changes if you've really felt that energy you can do this in qigong too or you could probably do it in other other practices too but qigong is really good because you can you can work with energy you actually like in certain forms you know like i do the dragon awakens form so for me i'm i'm working with the chi ball right for certain parts of it and then you know you're doing different parts but you actually practice that and then you start to feel the energy between your hands i mean we all have these these powers essentially to tune into this energy and just because the planet isn't supporting it fully right now and it's very it, it, it is by the way because we've seen gurus and different masters throughout the ages who have been able to like put their put their feet into solid rock or hands or like levitate but it's not being been able to be done by the average person because the the planet essentially that when you, when you say the veil is lifting it's kind of like the veil is coming up and the energy is coming up so it's like the top is coming off the jar and then or the the planet and then it can have higher energy when you have higher energy then it can support things in mass and it's like once the planetary egregore or thought form of this is impossible changes to oh this could be possible then it becomes much easier for beings to do these type of work do this type of work all right all right so I, that's the last that's the last slide we did it what an amazing an amazing 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 experience i really hope that from these two-part series you really got an understanding of the spirit world and let's just recap okay let's do a little bit of recap to kind of sum it all together okay and then if we have some questions great if we don't we don't oh my voice is shot okay so when you leave the body let me fix the mic again when you leave the body so if you have questions put them now so i see them before we finish but when you you leave the body because the body becomes inhabitable all right when the body becomes inhabitable then you just kind of pop out the body and you're like okay well i can't do this anymore obviously because it's not there's not the body isn't good because it's either damaged in some way or it's old right it's just not working anymore. So you come out of it like a controller. Then you look around. You're like, oh, wow. I There's this whole spirit world. My memories start coming back to me. Okay, I'm a soul. Wow, that was a wild experience. If you haven't gained that knowledge yet, you'll realize that. So th so then you do that. And then you come back. You see the tunnel of light. You see your guides. You know, your soulmate, whatever. One of your soulmates comes in, greets you. Then you go to a welcoming party. Well, healing station first. Then a welcoming party. And then, you know, you kind of have this little event. You get together. You feel good. Then you then you start to go back into you know your part of the spirit world where you could have that event there it's not it's not it's not like it's the same for everybody but this is just a general explanation right and so then you might go back and you talk to your counsel and your guide you start to reflect in your life and then you might have that party or if you didn't have it yet you go back to your part of the spirit world you you start to reflect in your life you learn your lessons you rest boom you just chill you chill for a while and then eventually time comes where you're like okay i think i'm ready and then you start to get ready and you might have different specializations you might have different colors and that might pertain to what your lessons you're trying to learn what you have learned maybe you're a guide in training maybe you're a master guide maybe you're here right now because you're you are a master and you're ready to to guide humanity and that could be it right 
And so could be purple. You could be a purple soul. Could be a blue soul where you're you're still learning to teach on earth or maybe it's one of your last incarnations, right? And so that's just a side note. But and then you start to reflect, you're like, okay, well, I'm I'm good. I'm just going to relax for a while. Then you relax for a while and you're like, okay, well, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to go back in. Or you know, if you've advanced enough, maybe it's like, okay, well, maybe I start to help other people. Maybe I, not people but souls. Maybe I start to see that there's more to this right and i start to if you are done incarnating you're going to be a guide right or you're going to you know we can talk about what the law of one talks about with that at another time but but anyways that's kind of where where we start that's that's the soul's journey in an essence and but there's obviously a lot more to it so if you want more information which i'm assuming you probably will Journey of Souls is the first book we covered in the first part. We just covered a lot of the second part, the second book, which is Destiny Destiny of the Soul. And that is his second book. There's also a third book called Wisdom of Souls, but it was not written by him. It was written by the practitioners of that he trained because he passed out of the body into, you know, in spirit world. Maybe he's reincarnated by now, but he passed away in 2016. And so he moved on, and the people who use his practice do that now, right? And they wrote a book about what their findings and what what felt, you know, what they felt was needed to be learned still. That wasn't in his books, obviously. So those are the three books you can also get if you really want to get it. Okay, let's talk about if you really want to get it. If you really want to understand this, go take your fancy self and go get a go get a life between lives session i'm absolutely one million percent not sponsored at this point where are you at <laughs> newton institute um uh, but but go go get a life between lives session and, and go if you don't believe me right or if you just want to know more you want to know your soul group you want to know your spirit guys you want to know what your soul color is you want to know what your lessons are go pay go pay somebody to have it done yourself and, and actually go into hypnosis go into the spirit world and check it out it's, it's the, that's the craziest part about this is like it's not like the bible where you're like oh this is what these people said you know thousands of years ago and i need to believe it no you can go experience this yourself you can go get, you can go get this done like there's <laughs> it's so funny to me because it's like if you want proof then go have the session you know there's i don't it's just like wow it's 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 such a beautiful thing so are you going to go over the third book i might eventually go over the third book but i'm not gonna now because a lot of people are messaging me about getting into dolores canon and law of one they want to know more about law of one they want a law of one podcast and i'm not trying to cater to everybody of course i'm gonna do what i want but i feel like the third book is is written in a way where it gets into specific like i've listened to the third book and i've read the third book the third book is a synopsis of like different situations that happen in your life like it's most it's pretty much case studies right and why depression happens why events happen why suffering happens um you know different a lot of different things that people struggle with they they give you a session in which that person has struggled with it why why you struggle with relationships why relationships are hard you know what's you know, all the different pillars of life, you could say, they go through in the Wisdom of Souls. But they do that in Destiny of Souls too. but it's more in-depth in the Wisdom of Souls, I think. How do I break out whatever's holding me back? How do I find out what's holding me back? Well, first of all, you're the thing that's holding you back is you. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to be honest here, it's always you because you control, you have free will. And it's always you and into what you're holding on to. But I get what you're saying. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. What I'm saying is that if you don't know what's holding you back, just observe yourself. Observe yourself in your life. Like what? Like go through. Okay. You want to know what's holding you back? It's either it's one or two things. It's either you don't have a clear vision or you just so many things distracting you, <coughs> distracting you that you can't even get a vision because you can't even tell what's going on because you're so distracted. My throat was like, no, you're not talking about that. <laughs> so, psych. So I will go over the third book eventually. Yeah, but but not not for a while, probably. So so if you want to find out what again, let me continue. 
you want to find out what is holding you back, go, do this tomorrow. Write down everything that happens in the day. Every single detail of one day. And if you do that, you'll know what's what's stopping you. It, because obviously it's you because you're you're giving you you're actually the one who controls what you're doing, but there are things that might be distracting you. And there's you write if you want to get really, really, really specific, like if you're committed, write down everything that you do and also every negative thought that comes to you. Uh, that's like it right there. And if you can, if you have that awareness, because it's always awareness, you got to start with being aware. Once you're aware of what's happening within your thought patterns and your brain and, you know, where you're feeling and taking advantage of, then you start to see, okay, you know, this is what's happening. And I feel like this is what the journey of soul, destiny of souls, you know, Michael Newton's work is about understanding the spirit world, understanding what's happening. When you have that understanding, it becomes very clear what's worth doing. Right, because I feel like, to me, in my humble opinion, like what's worth doing on this planet. The only thing that's worth doing is helping others, because you you can have this fancy stuff, you can have all this great stuff, you can party, you can do these things, but like that might be fun, but is that soul fulfilling? And that's what you got to ask yourself: Is what you're doing soul fulfilling? And how do you know whether it's soul fulfilling? How does it feel? Right. Do you feel like there's more? And if you feel like there's more, then there's probably more that you need to start thinking about, start contemplating where you want to go with it. And if you don't know, start reading. Just start reading some stuff. Like, you don't have to read my recommendations, but hey, my recommendations, if you want to really understand reality, you know, and if you feel like you want to be in service that way, if you want to do something along the lines of what I'm doing, start reading uh start reading if you're if you're more of a logical mind start reading law of one if you're not then um start figuring out where you want to help do you want to be more of a healer if you want to be more of a healer check out eastern eastern body western mind you know if you want to be more of a philosopher uh ellen watts book just so is very good um and if you want to be more of a sage uh check out uh oh i'm gonna scuff this name nis gardata Maharaj. Yeah. I think it's I am that, right? Check out that book. <laughs> I think I actually nailed that name, but check that out. All right? So start checking out different books, I mean, and just see what resonates. And if if you're like, oh, "I don't like reading." YouTube. YouTube is like out there. You can search anything. You can if you don't want to read the law of one, you know, I will have stuff out eventually, but there are people that already talk about the law of one on YouTube. So you can start watching them for now and you will you can get their interpretation you know or you can read conversations with god is really good if you're you just you're getting out of religion and you want to get that spiritual awakening going that book is really good i mean so in essence i can give you book recommendations all day because i've read a lot but you just got to start to understand where you want to help and if you don't know where that is you got to start reading and in contemplating topics to see if it resonates for example, I really enjoy Eastern body and Western mind, but I don't want to specialize in healing through chakras. I'm going to understand them, but I don't want that to be my specialty. But there are people that want to do, you know, that is their specialty, or they really like yoga. The yoga of Jesus is really good. Uh, Pramahansa Yogananda's books are also really good. You know? So, you know, it just depends on where, where you want to go, what you want to do. And if you don't know, you got to just start, you got to start getting off of distractions, whatever that is for you. I mean, I'm saying that with so much love because I've done that for so much of my life, but you just got to start distracting your, stop distracting yourself, not start and really contemplate your inner reality as well as external. Cause it's not always external. It's always, it's always an internal game because everything you, we perceive things, but it always happens within us, right? So I'm not trying to tell you, go do this, go do that, go do this. You can also be, you can also explore your inner reality. You can explore how you're feeling and what emotions are coming up. And that's probably what's going to be in there too. I mean, if you really want to get into it. What's probably stopping you from growing is your, what you're holding on to from your childhood. I mean, that's what it is for most people. Most people are struggling with self-worth of how they perceived reality when they were a child because their brainwave states were lower. And if your brainwave states are low, you're basically hypnotized for until like the age 13, I think it might be, or it's, it's a, it's a pretty high age. And so you're 
so your suggestibility is so high. You know? So you get programmed and you have to unprogram yourself. And if you don't, you're just going to keep suffering. And then that's going to project on other people. And then it's just a mess. So, yeah, I feel like that's a, that was a really long explanation, but I feel like I really just wanted to help you on that one. So <laughs> I hope everybody got something from that. So TikTok needs one minute book reviews. I will definitely do that. Uh, here in the next couple of days, I'm going to, I'm going to even do that tomorrow. So watch, watch TikTok tomorrow for the book reviews. I might come in with all my book reviews. And I feel like I should start going live on TikTok. I haven't even went live once, but I should. Here pretty soon. I asked for guidance and the universe gave me you. I'm glad it happened because I really needed it. Blessings. Blessings. That's what I'm here for. You know, that's so good to hear. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I can help. That's what That's what the whole point of this is. My The whole point of this is, is to, I really hope that you get my vibe is not to say they believe this that's not it that you're missing if you're, that's what you think this is about then you're missing the point the point is is that once you are once you are in a position where you can take in a perspective then that's where i want to give the ball into your court and say you take that perspective and you take that as you wish and if you can truly do that that's the starting of like the spiritual awakening path right so so right now, after listening to this talk and show, whatever you want to call it, it's about this, the balls in your court, right? So what are you going to do from here? Because that's what I'm about. I'm about how can I bring a topic that's really kind of a lot of topics that I talk about are esoteric. They're out there, but I really want to bring them to you in a way you can understand it. And now that you can understand it, hopefully you got to take the next step. And so I'm so glad I could be there for you, but but there's no buts. I'm really glad I could be there for all of you. But also know that the next step, if that is your step on the hero's journey, you know, meeting the mentor, then the trials come right after. Okay. So you know, the trial is now in a mental world like Earth, the trial now comes like, are you going to distract yourself or are you going to gain knowledge? Right. Or are you going to be like, are you going to be courageous enough to actually take this knowledge and do something with it? You know? I don't think I found my niche. Chakras aren't my specialty either. I have no idea what all is out there as a healer. Never mind my own healing I need to do. Okay. And that's part of the journey. For a long for a long do you want to know why I read so many books? It was because I was looking for I didn't know what I wanted to do. And you know what I decided at the end? This is just me. I there are people, there are many souls that decide I want to specialize in boom. And I want to be really good at this one thing. Okay. But there's also people that say, hey, I want to, I want to be, it was really funny. My parents used to call me this when I was younger because I did so many things. I was the jack of all trades, but master of none. That's kind of how I feel like my preference is. I don't know everything about the law of one. I don't know everything about destiny of souls. I don't know about, I don't, I don't know everything about anything, but what I do know is a lot about I know a little about a lot, <laughs> almost messed that up, but that's, that's the good stuff, you know, for me, but just kind of start to think about maybe where's that for you? Do you want to know a lot about one thing and really get it? Like, do you want to be, for example, what's coming to me is do you want to be Tesla where Tesla knew free energy? Boom. He knew, I mean, there was probably a lot more he knew about, but he was specialized. I want to, this is my service to the world, you know, and then there's Reiki people who are boom. This is my service to the world. Massage therapist, boom, this is my service. You know, and, or it could be, you know, energy modalities. There's so many different things. You know, so just know that you don't have to choose one thing either because I didn't. I didn't at all. You can be, you know, for example, there's people that like philosophy. Then you might know, you know, stoicism. And then you might know different other philosophies and you might be just specialized in the philosophy arena, but it's a lot of different ones. Or a lot of people like to know religion. Then you might know how yoga works. Yoga is not really a religion, right? But then you might know how Christianity compares to Hinduism or Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity, or how they all have their, they're all limited in a way, you know? And you start to focus on that, you know? So you can just start to start to think about that. Yeah, people say that about me too. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I felt that way too. There's too much to learn. 
and I don't like to just pick one. That's what I'm saying. Like that might be your case too. And if you're feeling that way, then you don't you don't have to pick. If you're feeling that way, then my best advice, if you want to like follow what I'm doing, where I'm just kind of picking up a bunch of stuff that I kind of like talking about. I don't kind of, I love talking about this stuff. Honestly, I could sit here all night. I talk about it. Uh, I could sit here for another two hours and just answer questions. Honestly, I mean, my voice, I'm not going to do it, but, but like, that's how much I enjoy having that knowledge of a bunch of different areas so I can give you different things. So if my recommendation, if you, if you want to start to understand a little about a lot, kind of like what I do, then you start pick, pick one, pick one thing and, and learn a lot about it, or at least a good amount and then move on. But here, here's the advice, right? Start taking notes, take notes. And if you want to even take it to the next step, literally start making TikToks, make it or whatever. It can be TikTok, right? It can be anything. Start making videos for your own benefit. For example, if you want to get into the law of one, man, it's dense. You want to understand. Okay. So let's say you're just picking up the law of one for the first time, seven densities, what each density is. You're trying to, you're trying to memorize what each density is. Write it down in your notes and make a video about it. Boom. Done. And then you remember it. You know, what's great about making videos. You'll find that you'll remember things way better when you make videos about them. <laughs> so it's a win-win for everybody. And you could use this strategy, by the way, if you're just doing one thing too, like if chakras are your thing, start making videos about them while you're reading the book. You don't have to wait till you read it and you're an expert and all this hoopla. That's a bunch of whatever. Like, it's not true. Like, start where with where you're at. And if you can do, if you can do that, then it's not going to take a long time. Right? It's not going to take long at all. Like, my TikTok has went crazy in less than a month. Right? How did it do that? Because I was just committed to making videos and learning. And I learned so much from making those videos. And that's the beauty of it. You know, and it also challenges me because when you're making videos, it actually challenges you to continue. Like I got to give back into Dolores Cannon in the, you know, in this time period between this, when you see this video and when you see the next one, you're going to, I'm going to spend basically all that time making TikToks and like studying Dolores Cannon hard, but it's a challenge because I, I need to get, the, I know I need to get that video out soon, but it's been a while since I actually studied Dolores Cannon in her books. So <laughs> I, it's a challenge. So it's kind of fun to see how fast I can do it. How fast can I come up with the next presentation? You know? And so that's where I would start if I were you. Again, that's a long explanation, but I feel like there's so much, you can get so much just from that. So yeah, start there, see how it goes and, uh, and we'll go there. So, but I think that will, uh, that will do it. You have so much good info in such brief periods. Thank you. I, that's the, that's the goal. I'm trying to give you as much information in a, in su in a short time. So it's not like, well, there's this and there's that, that way you get it and you got it. And then you, then it's up to you. I mean, I'm just, I kind of go fast with it. So, but that'll do it for today for the show. I really, really hope again that you take away an essence of freedom, a sense of empowerment, empowerment, empowerment. Whew probably time for me to get off if I can't even talk right. So I hope you really get a sense of empowerment from this and, and a true note that you cannot die. Then it's just an illusion that you're going to go to this place where it's all negative. It's not happening, right? And you start to take those those religious you know, things, especially if you're in the Western world, that where, where they try and get us in fear, and you can let that go. You let that go, we start to relax, and we can start to enjoy the game. Right, because the longer you hold on to this game sucks, the the more difficult it's going to be. Because yet at any time, at any time, you can decide that this game is going to be easy. This game's going to be fine. It's going to be fun. I, I can enjoy this game. There's so much beauty and bliss in this game. But it just takes an understanding, and the understanding can happen through subjective experience, through inner reality or knowledge coming from the outer, which is what I'm trying to give you, knowledge of outer and inner too. So anyways, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you everyone who is here live and I enjoyed all the questions and I hope to see you at the next one. I will post 
when the next one is, I will schedule it. I will announce it on my Instagram as I always do, because that's really the only platform that I can announce things on, to be honest. So make sure you're following my stories on Instagram because, you know, I, I post a lot more personal stuff on there. And also, I, I always announce when I'm going to have the lives. And also, you know, check the notifications because if you aren't watching this and you aren't, if you're watching this, you're not subscribed. Come on, man. <laughs> right. And so make sure that you're following on Instagram and as well as you're probably already following me on TikTok. So, yeah, and we'll have that. This will be on Spotify. I'll to let you know when it's on Spotify as well. We'll have the whole University Game Show on Spotify. So, and the last thing is, is that what's going to happen from here is we're going to do probably another two-parter, you know, and the two-parter is going to be Dolores Cannon, one, two, and then we're going to do Law of One, probably like five-part Law of One. So we're going to go really hard on quantum physics, Law of One. After we finished with Dolores Cannon's work, I don't know, I can't promise how many we're going to do on Dolores Cannon, but we're going to definitely hit it. And I really want to hit it right after Michael Newton because you're going to see it's like the same thing. It's like the same thing, but Dolores Cannon's more uh, ET kind of cosmic. And Dr. Michael Newton is grounded. So if you are looking for my Instagram, it's in the description. Click my link tree. I'll put my Instagram down there as well right after this. But um, it's always in my bio on TikTok or whatever. I think I put my link tree already down there. So you can just click that. So, and it's always the same. All you have to do is nick.zei on every platform, you know, or Nick's eye just by itself on YouTube. So, all right. Thank you, everybody. We will see you in the next one. Good night. <laughs>